Asari Dokubo, in a recent podcast that went viral over the weekend, revealed that he owns a private military company that was engaged by the government of the Nigerian state. I have a private military company that was engaged by the government of Nigerian state. And I've been doing the work for the Nigerian state. Private military companies exist all over the world. We have Blackwaters, we have Wagner, we have so many private military companies. They are not even new to Nigeria. The only thing new is that maybe a Nigerian is now providing the same services that South African and Belarusians and other people provided to fight the Boko Haram. And we fought, and we, fought. we are fighting side by side with the Nigerian military in many places. Well, all right, Dr. But a lot of questions here. Like I said in my introduction, people are genuinely worried about the situation in Niger. And you saw that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu met with, you know, governors in the boundaries or surrounding the boundaries of the country at this moment. And now we see this video from Asari Dokubo talking about owning a private military company, mercenaries. I mean, I don't know how this is you know, relevant or even allowed in our constitution. I know that it is against the Geneva Convention to even go to war with mercenaries. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, I guess the matter is as follows. Mm -hmm. The uh, concern about Niger is understandable. The uh, Nigeria shares border, about one, over 1,000 square kilometers, mm -hmm. converted into miles, 999 miles of uh, border zone, seven states, along that stretch, mm. Sokoto, Kebi, Katsina, Jigawa, Yube, all the way to Borono. And those persons there are saying for cultural reasons, for ethnic reasons, I've heard some people saying they have brothers, they have cousins in Niger, and that nobody should come and wage war against their kith and kin. And that in any case, if that were to happen, is the people in those seven states that will be immediately affected because you will expect that Niger who fight back, backed by Wagner, backed by uh, Russia, backed by uh, uh, the other states, Algeria, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, you know, uh, Guinea Conakry, you know, who have said, well, we don't support any kind of ECOWAS military intervention in Niger. So clearly, you know, there's an issue there. However, it's not only those northern states that will be affected, mm. as we established. And as I've seen Mr. Ted uh, Peter side, also uh, establishing, you know, that look, all of us will pay for it. If yes. you close the, uh, uh, the if the uh, fly zone is, is shut down, then of course people will have to travel longer to get to Europe or to return to Nigeria from Europe or even within Africa. So all of us will bear the brunt. So the ethnic argument is something that is a bit delicate. Mm. What we can hold on to is that Nigerians are saying we don't want war. We have enough problem in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, we, uh, our president may be the leader of ECOWAS, but why don't you find other means of helping the people of Niger instead of starting a war, the end of which nobody can predict. So that is that about that. And that's why the Senate threw out the suggestion uh, that they would need an approval, uh, that the president needs approval to implement ECOWAS resolutions yeah. under, you know, Section 5, Sub 4, you know, of the uh, 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 of the 1999 constitution. Now, the point about a private military company, also called uh, pri private military contractors, also called private uh, security guards and all of that, or private military contractors mm -hmm. or private military firms. Nice. It's a major yeah. issue in international. Yes. Law. In 1989, the United Nations passed a resolution uh, 44 slash 34, which dealt with this engagement of private military contractors. But it, it, it became uh, effective in 2001. And the debate was at two levels. You know, how do you engage PMCs in uh, maybe international peacekeeping of operations? And what is the difference, also nomenclature, between private military uh, contractors and also private military guards? Yes. OK, yes, in uh, Libya, they were engaged. In Iraq, we heard about them. Okay, the example of uh, Wagner has also been uh, yes. cited. Indeed, in 2014, 
Nigeria engaged some private military contractors, also known as mercenaries. Mm -hmm. But Nigeria was very careful. Nigeria used the word for training and logistics. They were supposed to, to uh, train, uh, I think, the 72 uh, military squad. Yes. Strike force. Strike force, yes, 72 Strike force, at that time. But then when uh, President uh, uh, Buhari took over, he probably been a soldier. And knowing how controversial mm -hmm. the engagement of private military contractors is internationally, yes. decided to move from it, and he didn't yes. continue with that operation. In uh, 2014, the issue was Chibok girls. Yes. So that's the background. Therefore, yes. Asari Dokubo to say that uh, he runs a private military com company. No, that would be an illegal company. Yes. It, it would be an illegal operation. If you look at the Nigerian constitution, only the police mm -hmm. is given powers for internal security. Mm -hmm. If the police is overwhelmed, then you can bring in the military for limited intervention. Yes. Although some of us have complained about the danger in using military for, for uh, security, internal security work. The third category is what they call private security guards. Those private security guards, they are recognized by law. They are, you know, under the uh, Ministry of Interior. And the Establishment Act of the National Security and Defense Corps allows the Civil Defense Corps to license those private security guards who can be deployed either for public or private uh, purposes. So if he's saying he has a private military company, no, that is wrong. Yeah. Because Nigeria does not recognize that. Mm -hmm. But if he says he has a private security guard company, like all these but people... But he says they, they work hand in hand with the, with well, the Nigerian that, that would be an illegality. and they've been conducting, you know, operations in different no, no, states. No, may, maybe he's using in, the, the in, wrong in, nomenclature. In, in Nigeria. No. But even to say that it is considered unlawful, just for Nigerians that are even considering that option, it is considered unlawful under the Geneva Convention to even send mercenaries to war. So, I mean, no, I don't even it's, think it's not, it's not it even, should be something... You know, when you go to Geneva Convention, yeah. you are even going far. Too far. As okay. recently as 2001, yeah. I, I just said the Resolution 44 slash you know, 34 mm. of the UN. Rest issues. Right. So it's a major controversial issue. issue. And, but we have over 1,100 private security guards. All these people you see wearing uniform. Yeah. They are all under uh, civil defense. They are supposed to work with, with civil defense or liaise with the security authorities in Nigeria. So it's not like Wagner. Somebody cannot say, uh, I'm running a Wagner of operation in Nigeria. That would be illegal. Very well said, Dr. Abati. Well, in the meantime, a Nigerian man by the name Comrade Muhammad Ali, in a video that has now gone viral, commended the Senate for rejecting the resolution by ECOWAS on the use of force in a bid to restore democracy in Niger. I want to say this very means to congratulate members of the Senate for denouncing the instruction needed by His Excellency, Mr. President and Commander in Chief of the Nigerian Forces, seeking for Nigerian Armed Forces to embed Niger Republic. Nigeria and the Niger, we are together. You, Mr. President, Alajibola Ahmed Tinubu, able to say you share borders with Niger, the Yorubas, no western part of Nigeria, Lagos, Ondo, Ekiti, Oyo, Ocean. If they share the borders with the Nigerian Republic, can you suggest for Nigeria to go into war with the Republic of Nigeria? So don't play with our intelligence. We have voted for you tremendously and we supported APC 100%. But now you wanted to reward us with what? What concern Nigeria with coup d'etat? How many coup d'etat took place in West Africa? It took place at Guinea Conakry. It took place at Republic of Mali with capital at Bamako. It took place at Burkina Faso with capital at Wadigadu. Why? Then the ECOWAS has not intended to embed Mali, Guinea, and, uh, 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 and Burkina Faso. Now you wanted to incite war between Nigeria and the Niger Republic. 
the Niger Republic voted for APC. I mean, by the way, Ayo, he has uh, the Nigerian, uh, I mean, the American flag emblazoned yeah. in that uh, outfit he's wearing, and also Gucci. I mean, he's I, also. I, the, I mean, it was hard to miss. I mean, but that's not the point. So, very interesting comments he's made yeah. and a few things speak up. But of course, one of the things that stood out for me the most was that he said that we voted for you, we supported the APC. Yeah. It seems like the borderline between Niger and Nigeria has been, there's a bit of a, it's been, it's been blurred. And now they feel like, um, as someone has described Niger as part of northern Nigeria, or one of the states, you know, the, 30, the 37th state in Nigeria. I, I, and so that's something that we should be quite mindful of. Yes, in terms of the relationship that the, uh, Nigeria, particularly northern Nigeria, shares with Niger. However, and you know, he's him talking about the fact that we've enjoyed cordial relationships. So why should you be coming to war? Why should you invade um, Niger? I think that that com that conversation and decision lies with Nigeria and Nigerians. We might share a very similar yes. name. We might share similar um, Nigerian Niger Nigerian. But that's where it ends. We, yes, we are um, diplomatic um, brothers or diplomatic, uh, we have a diplomatic relationship, but it shouldn't be, it, it, you should, he's not Nigerian. I think let's spell that out. Now, in terms of putting it, an ethnic slant to it is also a big challenge. And earlier today, we had talked about that. And we said that if Nigeria does decide to go to war or apply military force in Niger, it would affect all of Nigeria. Yes. It's not just the northern. Yes, um, initially, the first countries that would be, the first states that would be affected would be the seven northern states that border with Niger in Nigeria. But beyond that, when there's a humanitarian crisis, there's a ripple effect in other parts of the country. So I think it's important to not bring in an ethnic slant to this and to begin to talk about, oh, if we're the Southwest, I, th I think that's very wrong for us at this point in time. We should focus on the issues. If the president makes a decision beyond these issues, that the cost of going to war, the effect of humanitarian crisis in the North and other parts of Ni um, Nigeria, and those issues should be what should be on the table, not the fact that, oh, it's Southwest and North um, versus North. All right. There must be peace in West Africa. Well, let's take another story. Bosun Tijani, a ministerial nominee from Ogun State, who was screened over the weekend, made headlines after senators grilled him over a post he made on Twitter in 2019, describing Nigeria as a bloody expensive tag. Tijani came under criticism from members of the All Progressives Congress since the announcement of his nomination, with many asking President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to withdraw his selection at the commencement of his screening. Senator representing Oyon Nod, Abdul Fatai Buhari, in reference to the 2019 tweet, asked Tijani if he is still a patriotic Nigerian. On the 29th of July, 2019, you tweeted against the passport and citizens of Nigeria. Do you still believe in that your tweet today? Let me quote it exactly from what the way you put it. Nigeria is a bloody expensive tag to have against your name. Leave patriotism for a minute. That tag is bloody waste of time and energy, but a country. End of quote. Because when he was reading his resume, he was giving patriotism of how he served, blah, 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 blah. If he has changed now, I just wanted to know, and I want Nigerians to know. Well, Tijani was also made to apologize to the Senate over a 2021 Twitter post in which he described senators as morons. Senate Minority Leader Simon Mwakon read out the post and asked Tijani if he authored the tweet. Dr. Abosun Tijani, this last tweet and many others that will come, like the one you called your elders, look at somebody like, look at somebody like Senator Gomer. I'm sure he was in the Senate there when you said that he was a moron. So uh, 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 do you still believe that senators are morons? Or do you have an apology to make? If you can tend to an apology, we can move on. <laughs> Distinguished senators, um, I was raised properly as a Yoruba boy, both in Agege and Abelkuta, so I do understand that we're not meant to disrespect our elders. And that's not the training that we're given. Just watch the hypocrisy of this Nigeria Senate on this boy, what they did to this boy. Watch it. Uh, my father probably won't be proud of me uh, for all these allegations. But one thing he'll be proud of as well is that the passion that led me to those mistakes has also given me the opportunity to contribute to the development of this country. So I want to profusely apologize to everyone in this hall 
including anyone anywhere in Nigeria that may have been offended about everything I said. I ask that you please, in the process of accepting my apology, that you look at the undertone of everything I've said. I didn't say it to spite. I said it out of frustration and love. So please accept my sincere apologies, please. Oh, Rafa, you know, this has generated a lot of reactions. Let me take some tweets. Uh, this person wrote, he's very smart with the first two or three sentences made in his response to the tweet. He's prepared for the questions ahead of time. He addressed them as their son. That's the magic wand. They all kept their cool and listened with interest. And Akbabio already wet the ground before his speech. Well, Jasper wrote, he should have displayed his sincerity and rejected the nomination. The same crop of persons at the National Assembly as at last four years occupy the NASS currently. His acceptance just depicts the reality about most critics and experts in Nigeria. They are not sincere and they are just attention seekers. Once a chance comes, they'll grab it to join those they once criticized. Rufai, of course, I picked your tweet. You wrote, same Senate that refused to review petitions against El Rufai are so excited about Bosun Tijani's tweet. Rather than ask the man questions on how to develop technology and give us substance, it was about how to make him apologize for his convictions. Rufai. The other guy also said that maybe he should have so, rejected. So let me even add an addendum to that yes. tweet. A couple of things. And for those that said maybe he should have rejected, mm. a man has a right to reject or vacillate. You know, he can change his mind about things and he chooses to because he wants to make an impact. So please don't demonize people because they go, they criticize people for because we do that thing very well in Nigeria. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Secondly, as regards what I said, this Senate is very hypocritical. Because this is the same Senate, and Oji, 2 a.m. this morning, for some weird reason, I couldn't sleep all night. And I was watching the video of the screen of Mr. Adelia Lake all over again. Mm -hmm. And the Senator raised the case about Mr. Adelia Lake calling somebody a wild dog. And the Senate shielded, shielded that person. So the people they were, that Mr. Adelia Lake called wild dog, I didn't know Nigerians too. In fact, the words of the Senate president was, oh, let's not talk about pre-election matters, things have passed. Mm -hmm. So, this, there are Bosso's tweets that has passed, too. You can talk about that. But when somebody also bought a petition against El Rufai, that was a very important security Absolutely. petition. You said, oh, let's wave it off. Mm -hmm. Oji, let me even tell you what hurts me the most. And I think I must say this. This must stop in this country. The infantilizing of young people. They just infantilized Bosso Tijani, which is unnecessary. And I ask these senators that are saying a man of 40-something is a young man. Please, at what age did Yakubu go and become president in this country? At what age did Mr. Donajuk become governor? At what age, even Great Namdi Azikiwe, wasn't this the early 50s when this country gained independence? At what age did Anthony Nauru move the motion for independence of this country? Enough of this infantilization. People have a right to come to face the Senate, don't say, oh, it's because the president is reaching out to young people and all of that. Mm -hmm. If it's not a shame on us, mm -hmm. what is the average age for leaders? Obama just ce celebrated how many years? 60-something. Yeah. And he had become a two-term president, and this is eight years after being a two-term president. Absolutely. He's just in his 60s. Obama became right. president at what age? 40-something. Yeah. Cameron at what age? 40-something. Well, so it's not fight. tokenism for anybody. Well, it is because of their capacity. And yeah. I dare anybody what Boston Tijani has done for this country in the tech world. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, thank you very much, my people. Uh, you see the hypocrisy of the Senate. You know, see, if they say now only that tweet or two tweet with this guy, right, call them moron, and they say make you apologize, that means say, hey, apology when we go give, you go plenty there, you know, because I don't call them satanic so many times, you know, and as far as I'm concerned, all of you are satanic. Yes. You know, what led to it? What led to the plight? What led to the anger? What led to the tweets? What led to the statements? That is what Elvis. Yes, sir. Mr. Elvis, you see, even the guy himself is a moron. It's still the guy himself is a moron for going there to, 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 to apologize to them, which means he's not sincere. Forget what Rufai just said about that. He is not sincere in that is criticism because if you go there you tell them listen yeah i criticize you because this is who you are it's as simple uh, but, but, as abcd uh, uh, 
We, no, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just say something there? If you listen to the, what that boy said, that boy indirectly said what you're saying now because the yes, boy said did. that why they are criticizing We're not the indirect. We need to be direct. No, no, we need no, to no, be direct no, now. No, 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 like no. No, the boy, that, boy, that boy was smart. If those people were not morose, they would understand that that boy threw it back at them. He that is just my own talk yes. about it. Yes, he sent it back to them again. You know, one thing you guys must understand, we should, oh God, what a country. Anyway, the, 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 the actions of this man, this young man, is false. Because we, the young people, we certainly keep a close eyes on him. You know, we'll keep a close eye on him to see if he's going to become one of them as one of the uh, Twitter uh, person, um, person uh, stated earlier on. You know, if he's going to become one of them or if he's going to continue to criticize them. But meanwhile, we are going to discuss all this generally. Let's move to how uh, Festus Keamu was screened today. Because today was a screening. Let's listen to this. This is what, how it came into the uh, Senate. You know, another thing I notice about these Senate people, eh? They, they always mute themselves. Why? I don't know whether I want to notice them. They, they always mute themselves. They, they always mute themselves. Why? Distinguished colleagues, the last uh, nominee on the list today is uh, a distinguished son of the Niger Delta and uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, a, an advocate for justice, and a man who believes in excellence. My dear brother, SN versus Kiamo, uh, your CV is already with us, and, and most of us know you. So if there are things you would like to add that are not here, you use the next few minutes to say so. Otherwise, just summarize your life in one or two minutes so that you can answer questions from the distinguished senators. You are welcome. Thank you, sir. The president of the Senate, here seated as chair of the committee of the whole Senate, His Excellency, distinguished senator, Goswil Obot Akbabio, Commander of the Order of the Niger. And once my boss, always my boss, at the Ministry of the Niger Delta Affairs. Okay. All right. Uh, we are going to continue with another video. I have three videos combined together so, so that we can get it right. But let's continue from where it stopped on here. At the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. The Deputy Senate President, Order. all the principal officers of this most revered Senate, and in particular, I pay special recognition to my three senators from Delta States Distinguished Senator Edith Daffinone, Distinguished Senator. Egwarewa Adeniyi Keyamu. Paternally, I'm from Delta State, in particular, Owe local government area of Delta State. And maternally, I'm from Ogun State, in particular, um, Yewa South local government of Ogun State, Ilaro. And I'm also, I'm also a constituent of distinguished Senator Solomon Adeola Olamileko, who is uh, popularly known as Yayi. He's my is my senator from Ogun, Ogun West. In fact, he knows I'm from the royal home there, my mom, where they call Ojo Rono in Ilaro. 
and we enjoy a very, very convivial relationship. I also see so many senators here who are my mentors, my political leaders, who have personal friends over the years, comrades too. I see three, four, five comrades here who <laughs> we have enjoyed very excellent relation over the years. I greet all of you, sir. My appearance here today, sir, um, can only be by the grace of God, sir, and by the special benevolence and I repeat, special benevolence of our president, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And I want to say a special thank you to him for giving me this rare opportunity to serve. In fact, why I say I give all the glory and adoration to God is that on Friday when my name was announced on this floor, I was already packed. My bags and baggies were already packed with my dad and my family. We we're going on a short vacation. I had given up any hope to be here when all of a sudden they said my name had been announced name from Lagos. So I started rushing back and we had to cancel all our trips to go on vacation. So I... Una, yeah, he'd already packed his, his luggages and uh, everything to go on the vacation with his wife and children, you know, on this on his way, nine years, say the column, according to him. But my concern here is that he'd already packed his luggages and all that. You, stupid idiot fool, that is always supporting them. You know if you know if you package you know if you pack your luggage is right. You see the people where they support, he have options, he have all the money, he can move anytime. You mumu, where they support them, you cannot even travel from Lagos to Ibadan. You don't get the money in all day, and you are supporting them, you are insulting the people that is fighting for your future just because of these satanic people. You see your life. Let's move on. I talk and they go ask me so many questions when it reach my tunnel. They will ask me questions. As far as I'm concerned, you all are satanic. Give God all the glory and all the adoration, sir. Briefly, sir, I am a member of the Inner Bar, sir. Um, I'm a senior advocate of Nigeria. I practice law for about 30 years, sir. And I'm also a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitration, the United Kingdom. And so I also practice international arbitration, sir. I was called to the Nigerian bar about 30 years ago, sir. And over this period, sir, I have used the instrumentality of the law in many situations to advance the cause of democracy, sir, and the respect for the rule of law. That has been the story of my life. In fact, coincidentally, sir, when our present president was in exile, fighting for the return of democracy in Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, we were the young lawyers in Nigeria here who were empaneled by my late boss then, the late Shugani Faemi, who were coordinating the release of Nadeko leaders who were detained across the country at that time. Many of them. So that was the role we were playing Why our president was abroad at that time on the platform of Nadeko, also fighting for the return of democracy to Nigeria. So coincidentally, our paths crossed again when I joined the Action Congress of Nigeria in Delta State just at the cusp of forming the All Progressives Congress at that time. And of course, we were the foundation members of the APC from the ACN in Delta State. Sir, so my struggle and battle for the respect for the rule of law also led me at some point, sir, to fight for the rights of the Senate. And I'm sure you all know that, sir. That over the years, I felt that because we had left military rule, that it was important for the military to subject itself to this democratic institution. This is a star democratic institution that we have. When the military they take over power, they suspend the first, their first port of call is in parliament, they suspend parliament. So because this is the bastion of democracy. So I felt that if I looked at I looked at all the provisions of the law and I felt the military had to bow to this Senate, had to subject itself to the authority of the Senate. And so on my own, I wrote then to the Senate President, uh, Senator David Mark, I wrote to the then Attorney General Andrew I wrote to all of them that look, this procedure is not right. The military must come here for confirmation before they take their before they assume you know their duties, the service chiefs. So I went to court on my own, on my own volition. And I won the case for this Senate, for the National Assembly, to have a, 
a voice in the confirmation of service chiefs. And that is what, that's the powers you are enjoy, enjoying today. And that is the case of Kayamu against the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which I won, and that was how I fought for the powers of this Senate. I've also served as a private prosecutor for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for so many years before I was appointed a, a minister in 2019. And in that role, I, I served the country in prosecuting you know, economic and financial crimes, political exposed persons. And also, as a private lawyer, I represented clients across the country, both the rich and the poor. I had represented so many of them. In the course of that, I won so many of the cases. I lost so many of the cases, like all lawyers do. And of course, many of them are still pending in courts. This passion for the promotion of rule of law and human rights led me to receive the global award called the Global Human Rights Award by the United States Global Leadership Council in Washington in 2017. I was conferred with this global award. And in 2019, sir, I appeared before this same revered Senate. I appeared here as a ministerial nominee and magnanimously, sir, magnanimously, you conferred, you confirmed my nomination at that time as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I was first at the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs, where I served with my boss here, uh, Senator um, Gosler Pabio, and later I was also at the Ministry of Labor and Employment, where I was oversighted by one of the best senators I've ever met in my life, my friend, Senator Godia Akwashike. Luckily, he's back here today, and he was my chairman of my committee at that time, and we enjoyed very excellent relationship. There were one or two. Since we Kayamu they talk, I don't know whether now let me notice. When I don't hear say don't talk about any important thing or any meaningful thing apart from I ain't tell no this one, you know this one, you know that. Okay. Is not, that Honest, one. Honestly, Mr. Uh, Elvis, I was just waiting to talk about this. This is this uh, Kayamu. I'm just waiting. Hmm. You're very right. I, I was just waiting for opportunity to speak on this guy. This guy is a. Let's move on. Let's now, let Jeremy Day match where they talk since now. is criminal personified. He's crime personified. Look at him. Look at him. Let's how, move how on to. Let me take him out because he was talking about how he know this or he know that. But this man here, I don't know his name. This senator, so ah, this man go put smile for on her face. Make could listen to her. I taste screw Kayamu. Let's listen to him. Nigeria, Petadia Central in particular. Nigeria. Petabia Central in particular. Mr. President, I want to read section 88, 1, A and B, but I'll anchor my position on B. Let me start from 1. Subject to the provision of this constitution, each house of the National Assembly shall have power by a resolution published in its journal or in the official gazette of the government of the Federation to direct or cause to be directed investigation into any matter or thing with respect to which it has power to make laws. B, the conduct of the affairs of any person, conduct of affairs of any person, authority, ministry, or government department charged, charged, or intended to be charged with the duty of or responsibility for executing or administering laws enacted by National Assembly and disbursing or administering monies appropriated to be appropriated by the National Assembly. Mr. President of the Senate, I'm aware that this National Assembly and this arm, um, the Senate, has three major mandates. One, lawmaking. Secondly, oversight. And thirdly, representation. And I know quite well that what we are doing today is a continuation of what we did yesterday. And I'm happy to have the nominee here 
present. And he has said wonderful things. And which of them, he said, that he used instrumentality of law, which he is part and parcel of, to advance the cause of justice. And I know quite well as well that this House or this Senate usually use the instrumentality of legislature to advance the cause of fairness. <coughs> Mr. President of the Senate, I want to bring to the notice, because I've been a two-time House of Assembly member, two-time House of Rep member, and today a senator. And I was in the 8th Assembly of the House of Representatives, and the ninth Assembly, and today I am here. And I know that our rule book does not in any way exclude the continuation of free will drive of one section to the other. Una de ye, for me, eh? Oh God, I was so happy listening to this man this afternoon. Make una listen to her. Having said that, Mr. Senior President, I want to bring to the notice of this house that sometime in 2020, that an issue came up. And that issue was the uh, public works program. We all welcomed it with open hands because this is something that will help our people. Today we are talking about paying 8,000 to some people to make sure that it will alleviate poverty. Then it was the amount of 20,000 to 1,000 persons across the 774 local governments which my local government is part of it. And I'm sure your local government is part of it. And today, 1,000 per each local government minimum, 20,000 Naira, has a great multiplier effect that will make our people cushion so many effects that would have led our people into a very greater height. But what really happened? At a point, we wanted to carry out our responsibility because if some people can use the instrumentality of full law, which they find themselves within the confines of their own authority to advance for all their justices. Why can't we use the instrumentality of the legislature to support our people and help the populace, which we represent? Then, at that point, we invited the nominee because this thing has been a subject of controversy and public debate, which I don't know. We wanted to know and give him fair hearing. Please tell us, because it's now within our own confines authority to know what happened to our constituents. Say, so please come and tell us what really happened. What is the structure? What are the indices you are using to carry out this thing? Because our people will hold us responsible and accountable. And when he was invited, what we are talking about is a 52 billion naira appropriation, and the right of appropriation resides on the legislature. That is our right. And I know quite well that the right of oversight resides on us because we have to hold you accountable for whatever thing we are proposing. Okay, somebody just confirmed. I don't know his name. Anybody know his name? They said a Labour Party senator. You see? Yeah, you know? yeah, he, yeah, he's from uh, he's from Abia State. I forgot. I, I'll find out his name. And, he, and he's from Labour Party. I mean, uh, if he's from Labour Party, then he might be now. But I don't. And I'll find out his name. I know. I think okay. I know the man. Let me so let me get his name. No, okay. I'm so proud of this man. To be honest, I'm proud of him. You know. Let's listen. Pray to you. It is our right. Yes. And when the right of oversight resides on us, because we have to hold you accountable for whatever thing we appropriate to you. It is our right. Yes. And when he was invited, he expressly told us to the public that we want to hijack. His role. That we want to blackmail the black us that we are corrupt, that we want to hijack his role. And I know that he midwife the process. Nobody's against that. He midwife the process, and this falls within his own area of operation as the uh, junior minister for uh, labor and employment. Highly welcomed. And not only that, he went as far as in the public line to say that when he was asked how which in the disease did you use to gain this he said in quote they are not from the moon that was too arrogant to answer nigerians that way because we're talking about what we support and help our people that is why we are here anything outside that i'll walk away from this chamber my interest your interest and interest of everybody anything outside that i'll walk away from this chamber
when I see people speak, how I the same way I will speak, it makes me happy. Anything outside that, I'm here for the people. Anything, anything outside that, I walk away from this chamber. When I hear him, I'm, I'm so proud. They said I'm a Labour Party senator from Abia State. His name is Daliti Uwankosha. Now God will bless you, sir. I will yeah, find that's a way that's to bring you here to come speak to us. This is what we are looking for because you will die one day. Stand for what is right. Now say no. Now want to drive. Now want to drive exotic cars. Let's continue. Thank you very much, my people. Please help us to share. What did you use to gain this? He said, in quote, they are not from the moon. That was too arrogant to answer Nigerians that way. Because we are talking about what we support and help our people. That is why we are here. Anything outside that, I will walk away from this chamber. My interests are interests, and the interests of everybody is our people. That is why we are here. Not whatever thing any person is saying. And today, we need to find out, Mr. Senior President. Well, nobody is stopping him from being cleared. No. And I'm happy the way the uh, president has sent so many people, great people here. We have questioned them, passed through the screening, wonderful people, and we're ready. As much as they are ready to work with the, uh, the, the, the system, we are ready to clear them. But not on the grounds of putting something under the table, not granting some people fair hearing, because I would like us to grant him fair hearing, since he has been running away from it, for people, for Nigerians to know what really happened. Because I wouldn't like any person to be holding that, because this thing has been subject of debate here and there. What happened to the 52 billion? What happened to the... But he is here, and it's our responsibility to find out. So, Mr. President of the Senate, I'm of the opinion so strongly that he has to tell us what really happened, but not here. We have to keep it down a little bit. We're not saying that we're not going to clear him. This is a house that can reconvert at any point. You can even call for an emergency and we'll reconvert. Because we would not like to what happened at the last administration where some people felt that the president was in charge and so many other things were happening out there. We won't take it this time around. We want a situation, we hold you responsible from the onset. Since Mr. President has started showing us the right hand, we must follow along that side to make sure that we work with him in that right hand as well. Therefore, Mr. President of the Senate, I'm of the opinion that we hold this down a little bit. And I move a motion that we suspend forthwith this nomination and wait until when this is clear so that he can freely walk in our environment and tell Nigerians, I have perfectly done well because this record has been put straight. That is my submission, Mr. Senior President. I rest my case. Distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, the point of order raised by the point of order, the point of order raised by Senator Darlington Ugocha is noted, but on the motion. There is no seconder. Uh, 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 okay. But let's find out first. Senator, uh, as, uh, there, there's a motion on the ground. If you want, you can, you can second it and amend it, whatever. Uh, 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 so, if there is no seconder, <laughs> leader of the leader, leader of the Senate, the point of order had been noted. Now he also proceeded to move a motion. Which has not been seconded. So, okay, okay, Senator Abalibe, let me hear you. Thank you, Mr. President. Arise.
to second the motion, very ably moved by Senator Darlington Wokocha, that in view of Section 88 B of the uh, 1B of the Constitution, which mandates the National Assembly to go ahead and look into the conduct of affairs of any person, authority, or ministry. And where such a person refuses and deliberately stays away from letting the National Assembly do its work. And in view of the fact that this nominee rejected the summons of both the House of Representatives and the Senate, that I do support that this nominee should be stepped down pending when he decides that the National Assembly has that right to inquire into the workings of a minister and his ministry. I so second. Uh, distinguished colleagues, the, the motion has been moved and seconded. Those who are in support of the motion that the screening of the nominee be stepped down until further inquiries, say aye. aye. Those who are against, say nay. We are going to be happy for you. My person, in case you are not know, the screening did not happen. Most of the senators did not allow the screening to happen. They have to now go for emergency uh, 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 break. So everything was suspended, except the, the one got one for inside closed door meeting, and then the one before in secrecy. They don't let that happen. Normally, normally with what we see today, Kayamu shouldn't be accepted as any minister, even though they are there temporarily. It shouldn't. We cannot continue to allow satanic people to get a public office anymore. My people, I'll stop this video right here. I, I really want to hear from people. Thank you very much, my people. Or should we continue with the video? Let me ask you guys on the comment section. Please write it there. Should we continue or we should start talking? I, I think it depends. A lot of, maybe a lot of people have not seen it, but for me, I watched the whole thing. But I don't know for other people. But maybe for the benefit of people who did not see it, the whole of it, maybe we should finish we, the video, right? Yeah, maybe we can finish it. Yeah. Okay. I, that, I'm just speaking for myself. I don't know for others. Okay. Uh, Distinguished colleagues, distinguished colleagues, 
De, de ce wesh Alex. Uh, speak from there, please. De ce wesh Alex. I will put the question again. Give him the chance to talk. We, we, we're supposed to be fair. Uh, Given the chance. Uh, the 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 sewage colleagues. The the sewage colleagues. What Akbar is trying to do here? He wanted to pass him, but people say no. Now he want to put the question again to see how he can confuse people so that they can pass Professor Skeyamu. But because he, he himself is a criminal. He knows of what Of course. He they planned it. Yes. He wanted to pass him by force. He started stuttering. He started Why do stuttering. you want to pass? Do you want to put the question again? Please. Even when it's obvious that people say no. Can you imagine if they have a... ...of those LP senators all now coming out to speak on the same thing? Let's, let's move on. Going to order. Mr. President, point to order. Mr. President, point to order. Uh, the wish colleagues. Uh, the sewage colleagues, the se I, will, I will put the question again. Other place, distinguished, distinguished senator, sit down, please. My people, not be me the mutant. Order, please. Not be me the mutant at them. Now, so that they do one. Watch them live. They're always muting themselves. They don't want me to hear some things when they talk. It's a deliberate act. <laughs> Distinguished Senator, take your seats, please. How distinguished they are. <laughs> Uh, the wish colleagues. The only parliament where I know for my life where they, they mute themselves. If you watch UK parliament, they know they mute themselves. They hear everything. The only one where I know for the whole world. You know why? Because they don't want mistake make happen. You they say they are muting themselves. Not be only today, every day. 
they are doing this every day. See them. First, you the way they control all the mic. They tell them, say, they off all mic. Where people, they, you know, made the, you know, say this people with this social media, but they don't go carry our, our word, go social media. See them. See them. They will just mute them. A whole spin. Uh, distinguished colleagues, the distinguished colleagues, the the president of the Senate, sit down. The president of the Senate is on his feet. Refer to Order 62 of our rules, and I'll read for those who may not have gone through. Whenever the President of the Senate or the Chairman rises during a debate, any Senator then speaking or offering to speak shall immediately sit down. And the Senate or the Committee shall be silent so that the President of the Senate or the Chairman may be heard without any interruption. I am of the view that we are not the people that nominated the nominees that we have been screening it's from the president. A lot of indices must have been taken into consideration. Under a rowdy situation, we cannot arrive at anything. But I've noticed that from the, even here, some of you are prepared to stretch the rule to even asking for division. But we will not go without doubt. Lead out the Senate. Lead us right. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm very, very distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. May I at this time move that we dissolve into an executive session to be able to uh, iron out some issues. Uh, but uh, before that, I guess my first motion should have been uh, based on order eight sub three of our rules uh, to move for an extension of time for this Senate to be able to sit beyond 2 p.m. Uh, this should have happened some 13 minutes ago, but for what was going on. Uh, so, sir, please take it that my first motion right now is a motion for extension of time based on order eight um, sub three of our rules to enable us clear the other attempts on the other paper. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise to second the motion that will extend our sitting time to beyond two o'clock to enable us to continue today's proceeding as well second. And no, he will, he will. And uh, okay. The civil colleagues, the motion do late has been moved and seconded by the minority leader that this August assembly do extend its sitting time beyond two PM. Those who are in support of that motion say aye. aye. Those who are against say nay. The ayes have it. Our sitting period is extended beyond 2 p.m. Minority leader. The Senate leader. Is this your confusion here? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Very distinguished colleagues. Um, I move that uh, we resolve into. Um, an executive session to enable us uh, a closed session, closed session, uh, otherwise also known as executive session, to uh, help us uh, iron out some issues. Thank you.
All right. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you. We stopped it right there. Um, I want us to start talking. Thank you for your time with us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you. As you all can see, that this is the situation where we find ourselves. It's very, very sad that you can see all our senators. It looks like many of them, they are just playing. You know, they look like kids playing. It's only one or two that is standing for what is right there. And number one of them is that our Labour Party spokesperson, just that um, senator that was talking, Senator Daliti Kosha. I'm not sure if I pronounced his last name properly. Yeah, you one know, one 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 Kosha. Okay. As you all can see, that what is, uh, especially Akbabio, the Senate president, what he was trying to do, because Tinubu already tell and already say, whether rain or sun, he must be cleared. All this, what they are doing. Oh, go there for screening and all that. No, people you don't already the way they talk say whether rain or sun, it must go through, regardless of whatever anybody say there. But let them talk, may them move, not, may not be like so, not let them. It's just like we're going to vote. That's why you see, you know, God forbid they don't bring a rerun in. You don't see anybody will go come out again because they'll say our, our, our voting before not count, right? So, the same thing. You know, because they don't already before since Nigeria was created, these people they don't they don't take votes from the people. They decide who wants to run. That's what Tinubu wanted to do. Now, now make can this one now come who come, it can become problem. So that's what they are also doing right there in, in the house. You know, they don't go for executive meeting and all that. You know, you will hear now say tomorrow say they don't clear him. The basis of clearing him, you don't go know again. And after looking everything, we now get to understand that uh, Kayamo have been lying for so long. He's a liar, he's a deceiver, he's a deceptor and all that. So we now decided to clear him. That's it. They will not have a good reason to clear him. This is where we find ourselves. And this is why you see someone like me. I'm fighting every day to have a new Nigeria. Because I know this Nigeria that we have is a scam. This current Nigeria is a scam. It's not working for you. It's not working for me. It's not working for us. Even some of you that is listening to me right now, you think that it's working for your guy. It's not working for you. And you know that. If you live in Nigeria, God forbid, say me, you're not sick. Maybe that that time you will not say, even your money cannot guarantee you to live. Now there you go, no, say, the Nigeria that you have, that we all are fighting for today is not working for anybody. Some of you are fighting selfishly, while some of us are fighting for a better Nigeria. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. It's time for us to move on right now because I, I really need to start hearing from the people. I'd like to quickly appreciate uh, Zipora. Zipora, thank you very much, Elera, for the super chat. The Tardis and the Gomez, thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you right there. Uh, please, guys, uh, help us to press on the dollar sign, support what we are doing here. Uh, help us to share, like this broadcast as well. Currently, we have 433 likes. We have over 1,350 watching us across. And the likes is not still good, 433. If we can take the likes to 800, that would be fine. Press on the like button, my people. And even as I'm speaking right now, nobody's pressing on the like button. Just press it. If you know you like what we are doing here, the energy to put in this introduction is not very, very easy. Except maybe, you know, um, okay, yes, it's, I'm right. You know, I'm, I, just, I just refreshed. I was thinking maybe maybe the number is not right. It's right. It's not 439. You know, so, you know, please encourage us to do more for you. Now, God, now God bless every one of you. I'd like to start from someone that's joining us from Nigeria quickly to hear from them. Let me go to uh, Enterprise. Enterprise, thank you very much for joining us once again, sir. I'd like to hear from you. Eight minutes. Thank you. Uh, good evening and good evening to everyone in the panel. Uh, I go first uh, to Chinebu, uh the war that is war against us. The war is not against Nigeria. The war war is not against Niger. It's particularly about not. Why would you start war if National Assembly approves for him? For why you want to start war? Those to fight not. He is interested to fight not. His mind, his aim is to fight not. Because nothing you didn't have. We didn't have problem with Niger. We are we will manage we manage from Niger, also Niger manage from our side. So why they decided to war, war, war against us? 
the way who offended Shinibu, the who offended him, most of, uh, most of uh, some people in the North here vote for him. I particularly don't vote for him because I'm not a religious person. So I'm, I'm, pop, I'm, just, I'm not just partial on what I'm doing in life. I don't like you, I don't like you. That's my own. So the, some of our North people vote for him and they wanted to war against, war against us. So what is him? What is the aim? So do we offended him in any way? So that's by the way. So let me go to judiciary. Please judiciary, I'm still coming back to you again today. I says, please and please to you. Judge rightly. You see, look, look, you have evidence in the court. They they bring everything to court. If you to look into it, look at those, look into those things they bring to court. And then give judgment based on those evidence they give to in the court. Look, I'm saying it again now. We we'll vote or be, we do not vote anybody. I particularly, I told you, I'm not feeling fine, but I go through the polling units in Abuja all. In my areas, I go all around, I, I park my car. Even though I'm not feeling fine, I park my car and walk all around. Or we winning from all the polling units. So judiciary, please and please, do give the right judgment. Don't, don't be afraid of anybody. Don't be afraid of Tinubu. Tinubu is a person. Two, uh, 200 million of Nigerians decided to vote who they want. Please, those 200, Nigeria, two million, 200 million Nigerians that vote, consider them. Don't consider Tinubu. Tinubu is a one individual. So I want you to know that you have personality. You have your own Views. So judge according to what they bring the court to the court. Please and please, I am begging you, your judiciary. You have uh, your own, you have your own, you have your own personality to to judge. Judge according to the what is in court. Please and please, I am still begging because look. And look, it's good for us not to beg. It's good for me to beg you now. Look, Nigerians are very angry. And they'll check, sorry, I'm sorry to say, they'll check law into their hands if you fail to do what is right. Do what is right. Please and please judge according to what the evidence they prove they bring to the court. So, don't be don't scared. You, are, you see, the judiciary, judiciary is to give us leaders of our constitution, break, give us rule of our constitution. So you are to guide us. You are not to break us. You are not to cause confusion for us. You are to guide us according to our constitution. So if you are to guide us according to your constitution. Why can he, how, according to our constitution, and yeah, how can he fail us? Because of Chinimu, 200 million Nigerians people decided to go and vote. Please and please. I'm not, look, I'm just trying to say this is out. I'm not feeling fine, but I have to vote myself because I go out and vote, and my vote was not count. I'm very angry. I am very angry. I'm not happy with this situation. Please and please. Give right judgment to the who he deserve. Who will vote for? Who will vote for be? Give to him. I know Kia Oda is a Igbo man. I decided to vote. We no, we are not, look, we are not looking to rather you are. We are looking for right person that will lead us in this country. We are suffering. We are suffering for how long? We can't be local because maybe your religion, your 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 from this trap, your from this trap. No, we are looking the person who is who move this country to uh, to higher level. Nigerians are suffering. Nigerians are suffering. Our please.
give the right legitimacy. It's left to you. Ball is in your hand. It depends on where you're playing. If you play it right, Nigerians will back you. If you play it wrong, Nigerians will not back you. And if Nigerians decided not to back you, look, you are going to be in heavy mess. Chirimbo is a one individual. But two hundred and we can two hundred Nigerians cannot check their destiny into the wrong hands of someone called Chirimbu. Please, I just what all out that I have to say this evening. Please and please judiciary. I repeat again my word. I say please and please give us right judgment. That's all we want from you, people. Do that and get your credibility. Do that and be seen as someone. Look, they say some people say, yeah, that kind of judgment I might be given for. Let it be you are the you people are the first person who will break that record by doing right. Do right so that you can break that record. You know, look, it's better to do right than to do wrong. So please, the ball is in your hand judiciary. Play it very, very good. Play it in a nice way. Play it in a good way. That the judges will command, they command you people. And they will stand by you people. Thank you for now. Thank you. Thank you very much sir, for your uh, passionate uh, delivery. You know, I understand how you feel. A lot of people are feeling the same, a lot, especially those of you that live in this country, Nigeria. It's very, very pathetic. You know, um, I like the part where you said you don't care whoever, uh, wherever anybody comes from. You just need a good leader that will govern the country so that you can have a good life. I like that. You're not tribalistic. You are not an evil man. You are, you, you are not an and you are saying this. So, yes, judiciary, you have to do the right thing. Thank you once again. I'll go to Madam Helen. Madam Helen, thank you very much for joining us. I'm prioritizing you because you join us from Nigeria as well. Good evening to you, Matt. Please talk to us if you are there. Good evening, Mr. Elvis. Okay, Good Madam evening. Helen. Sorry, let me come back to you. I'm sorry. Um, I have uh, somebody on the phone. Let me quick. I think it's Mr. Alex. Mr. Alex, thank you very much for calling in. Good evening to you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you very much, sir. Talk to us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody on the comment session, those uh, watching us worldwide, thank you very much. I listened uh, um, to the guy that just spoke. Uh, for me, I, I, I don't know. In a way, I, I agree and I also disagree with him. Uh, yes, I'm not a violent person. Well, now we are all now the uh, my my brothers and sisters who are sharing boundaries with the with Niger Republic, they now see the reason to say we don't want war. They now see the reason to say we don't want crisis. But Nigeria itself has has been at war in Benue State, in in some side of the country, some parts of the country. M many Nigerians have suffered a lot from people from the same some some. We get people from the northern side of Nigeria who are sponsoring banditry, who are in fact at Dubai, the, the Dubai government at the time released a list of northern senators and governors who are sponsoring banditry and Boko Haram. So now they are about to feed of their own medicine. So I pray it doesn't happen. But when we talk here about karma, when we talk here about, you know, things Bouncing back to you, people think we are just loquacious, or we are just mandibular, or we are just, you know, uh, maladorious, or we are just um, vapacious. It has come now to the doorstep. It has come now. Uh, whether it came by Tunubu or it's coming from Niger, but it is coming. Those, those food you gave to people in Benway, those food you gave to people in Nasarawa, those food you gave to people in the eastern part of the country, those food you gave to us across the country for the past seven years. God is a bad... Bros, I'm not, I'm not to No, 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 I'm wait, not let me finish. Yes, I'm no. going somewhere. I'm let going somewhere. Call her. 
a lot of people paid ransom to 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 free their loved ones from the Abuja Kaduna train, where we have people in government, in Senate, Northern governors, their names were mentioned in Dubai, Emirati government, released names. Erufai was allegedly to have been responsible for the taking of the lives of more than 1,000 shared Muslims. Listen, listen, when you think you are smart, when you think you know it all, when you think you, have, you, are, you, you are taking lives for the sake of one God somewhere, the, what goes around comes around. I don't want war, fine. But the, the, there are things that can never be forgiven. Blood is crying. People are, the lives of people are crying before God. Nigeria needs healing. So what's about to happen in the Nigerian Republic? Whether Senate vector it or not, it may still happen if it is justice. So some people in the north, this will be a lesson. I'm not saying everybody. This will be a lesson to some of our politicians who benefited from, from the killing of Deborah. Did you all come out like this when Deborah was taken? Broad daylight? Where were all of you who's crying foul play now? Where were, where were all of you making videos? Where were the senators when Deborah's life was taken? Broad daylight for, for just a tweet, a tweet, innocent girl was brought alive. Broad daylight. Where were you who just spoke on our platform? Where were you, my dear brother? Did you cry out? Where were the governors? Where were the senators? Where were the rep members? Where were all everybody who is crying now? Who are, who, who've come out suddenly, adventitiously, lended their voice I'll against give him the, the war right coming? Of reply. So, so let, yes, let me just round up with this before right. he replies. For okay. me, for me, I'm not saying everybody did it, but when a region is doing something, and people kept quiet. It's assumed that. All of you did it. At the time, there was a time, I signed up, uh, there was a time a, a man, a notorious criminal called Anini was, you know, you know, disturbing some part of the country. It, he, he, he was a Benin man from uh, Bender State. Each time you go to Lagos, they will say, look at Anini brother, if you are from Edo State or Bender State. They will say, look, look at Anini brother. They stigmatize us, us with that name. So I'm sorry, my dear, good, good not on us. I'm sorry this thing is, is rubbing you. I pray there is no war. But you cannot see that no man can play God. Who knows what is coming? Who knows? So let me hear you. Thank you. Let me hear you. All right. Uh, um, Enterprise, you wanted to say something, please. Uh, respond to that quickly. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, look, my brother, I'm not a uh, Let me tell you truth, sincerely. Look, that is what I'm talking about. Believing in the North, we're going, we get, we'll go against him. And I'm telling you, if I see him one on one, as I as I talk to you that if I see an Ikiama one on one, I'll hold him. If I said why one on one today, you who are going to hear what we are, what we will do to them. We're not happy with him. This are uh, this this look. If I said complete devil, please you don't talk of him. And right. I'm not talking about this. No, no, Simple. that's round up, round up, sir, round up. Thank you. Okay, that's all. Thank you. God bless you. All right, uh, Mr. Alex. Mr. Uh, Mr. Harris, yes, please, sir. just 30 seconds, sir. Please, I'm trying to come to the point, and it's not easy. Let me just say this. I'm not against Northerners, but if, you, if, you, if you've been in this country in the past seven years, you know the red, the red oil that flowed in this country, especially under Buhari's government. It became obvious that those in power in the North, I will not put water in my mouth to say it, in the North, we're benefiting, we're happy. With the red blood flowing, with the kidnapping, raping of women, you know, invading of farmlands. They will catch somebody with five naira, they will take him to police station. But a full animal will parade the streets of the country with AK 47. This was what led him of the canoe to some of the problems he has today. This is a mission. This is a mission that former president has mentioned. A fan of me. We are not a fan of him. This is this people are that you that, that, that see. Let me tell you, this people we do not accept them at all. Just once some people keep quiet, you should not think that the whole notice that they are supporting him. We are not Listen, supporting him, brother, uh, Mr. Enterprise. Let me tell you something for you to come out and join this panel at all. I have so much respect for you for that. For you to come out. And join this panel to speak out on what is affecting us. I respect you. In the past, the things that have happened in the past, 
and I cannot justify, I cannot say if you came out, if you talk about it or not, but this particular one that I can see, I already respect you for that. You are a northerner and you want a better Nigeria. You are supporting Peter Obi not because he's a northerner. You are supporting him because you believe he's the only person at this moment that can give you a better Nigeria. I want to find a way even to support with my money. Look, we, we want, we'll go here and we'll vote for be in Abuja. We'll do everything I, we can, we can, we can, we'll put our money. Go ask uh, Asha, I put my money on it. I'm not saying that, but it's a person. We need the right so person who is going to lead us. A lot of things happen in the North. If you, 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 you are tribalistic, you are not, I'm not sure you support to be. So I'm not sure you are tribalistic in any way. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Let me hear from others. Um, you know. um, Mr. Evans, if I can just uh, lend my voice to also commend him. Because okay. uh, from, yes, I want to also commend you, uh, Mr. Enterprise. Thank you for coming out to, you know, to support. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Because I know in that, that, in that circle, it's not so easy to be, to be different, to have a different view like you now. You know, so I really commend you, and I know that as God is as See, touch your own heart and open your eyes. I don't care. I give my heart. I don't care what you do to because I give my life. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be, and I'm ready okay. to every to do anything. I'm ready. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. All right. Um, let me quickly take uh, this call from Mother Debra. Okay, Mother Debra, you not responded. That's fine. Um, please, guys, if you are calling in, call when. Uh, Uncle Gassim, you're just coming. Not be your turn yet. We have somebody from Nigeria that want to speak. Be, okay, <clears throat> I be want you... to have my voice. I be just for enterprise. Okay, go ahead. Talk to him quickly. Um, <clears throat> enterprise, my brother. I will call you my brother. I want to encourage you. By all means, try and try and be coming to our forum. Why I'm saying this is that I know when we talk of freedom, the northern people they are not free. <laughs> We are more freer in the south. I follow. I follow. Let him finish, sir. I follow. So, I follow the the hold on. Hold yes. On the hold so, on. so we know what. That's why sometimes I don't blame the Talakawas or the the real the poor people. Be when when certain things happen, I know the leaders, the so-called elites in the north, they have a firm control because of feudal nature. Or like in the south, you there are south east south west south south. There is an there is a, a limit to what our leaders will tell lies. We stone them, we shot with we boo them. In the north, it's not always like that. I know. So when certain things happen, I know what you are speaking. Because I know the north love Buhari. But because Buhari disappointed them, they are now free to decide. That's why I believe that they voted for B. Because they said somebody informed me that Buhari has been their person right from time immemorial, but the guy disappointed them beyond even Jonathan. So they felt that the people they call themselves, they told the politicians like Erufai, you told us to vote a Muslim, our brother. Now we voted Buhari eight years. He put us in the mess that neither Obasanjo nor Jonathan put us. Therefore, we are voting for Obi. So I believe the North voted for Obi. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, Enterprise have been with us for more than uh, 10 times now or more. So for me, um, we cannot generalize whatever that is happening in any state or in any ethnic, ethnic uh, background. We can't generalize when we are taking decisions. You know, uh, if somebody talk during the time of uh, Deborah or not, we don't know. We don't see video, fine. You know, but we don't know. But if we also see anybody, just like Mother Busy Brains now. Mother Busy Brain, in case you do not know, Busy Brain that is always joining us, joining us, joining us here. She's a not -hana. You know, Mother Busy Bray is not Anna, so she's always here supporting Mr. Peter Obi all the time. So she will encourage more not Anna's to come out and speak on the media. Thank you very much, Lady Deborah, for calling in. Please talk to us. You have two minutes. Good evening to you, ma'am. Hello, good evening, Nanja Watch. It's been a, it's been a while. Thank so you. Let me just make a quick uh, contribution to this broadcast. Go uh, good evening to everyone listening and all the commenters. Thank you. You it's have two minutes. Important. Two minutes. Um, yeah, this is a very important uh, topic. I actually wanted to support what uh, Brother Alex was saying. 
that uh, now that the Northerners, uh, they see that this is going to affect them in a very negative way, they are coming out, you know. But really, they were silent when, when things were happening. I always say it when you support what is wrong, when you support evil because it favors you, that evil will definitely come back, you know, to hurt you. So now, the same thing they supported is, is coming back to hurt them. And uh, they are speaking out, but it's, I don't know how they are going to do it. But they supported this wrong thing. And uh, unfortunately for them, it comes back to bite them now. So this is a lesson for all those that are supporting evil. They should bear at the back of their mind that the same evil they are supporting, because it is favoring them, will still come back and hurt them. So they are, this is what they supported, and they are getting it now. So I don't know how Tinubu is going to wiggle himself out of uh, this situation because he's, he's faced with uh, pressure from the West. And now the same Northerners who supported him and put him in power, and now uh, they are not in support of him uh, going into Niger. So I don't know which side he's going to tilt to. I feel sorry for him okay. because he put himself in this ridiculous situation. And, and and I don't know how he's going to wiggle himself out of it. Thank you, ma'am. So Thank let's you, watch and see, but let's focus on the judiciary and see what the, the judiciary is going to do. Okay. But one thing I can say for sure is that whichever way that it happens, there's already a clear evidence that this administration is in, is in big crisis. It's already, and there's a pending uh, a loom, a doom that that is facing them. And okay, I don't thank know you. how they are going to uh, get out of it. Thank, thank you, ma. you so much, uh, Nanja Watch. God thank bless you, you ma. Sir. Thank you, thank you. All right, uh, let me take just one more call uh, here quickly. You know, Madam Mao, may I return your call? As you can see, I wrote this one a couple of uh, weeks ago. A man could become the next victim of the evil he celebrates today. Don't defend evil because it favors you now. It could work against you the next minute. Yes, you know, whoever that is crying out today, one or two persons have supported things that favored them in the past. But you coming out today, myself, you, you listening to me, anybody at all, it means that you have decided to stand for what is right. So I will applaud anybody at all in that category. Thank you very much, Madam Maomi. Thank you very much. Good evening to you. You have two minutes, please. Good evening. Good evening, my brother. I will just say two or three things. Then when I when I have time again, I will say my remaining points. Yeah, good evening to the panelists and everybody. Yeah, I'm going to start my talk today with Tinumbu. Tinumbu thought uh, the Northerners put him there. But he doesn't know that when he's going against them, they will fight him back. All this Nigerian uh, problem, Niger, uh, Niger Republic problem, is coming back to him. It is those people that put him there that will remove him. They have started to war against him now. They will be the ones to take him out. Now I want to talk to Justice Ariwola. Hmm. I'm, I'm talking about him. You know, I said it yesterday. I'm going to talk about him throughout for about 10, 20 times until they give the judgment. Please allow me to speak in my dialect. Justice Ariwala, Nigeria. Everything happening is between you, Tinumbu, and uh, the cabals, whoever they are. I don't want to know. Tinumbu Logbe Yisibe, Yoruba Nimi. Yoruba nini? Tinubu ki ishe Yoruba. I can say this in front of anybody in my life. Oti mi lo juku kwa 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 kwa. I'm so much ashamed. What is coming out from this Tinubu man? He doesn't come with a clean hand at all. Right from Ojo Tati Moni, Nigeria. I don't know him as a Nigerian. Because when we were growing up and his mates were growing, Papa Bode, George, and all the others, we knew them, even though we are younger to them. I never knew Tinumbu until maybe when he was maybe 20, 30 something years or 40 something years. He didn't grow up. He's not a Nigerian. 
Go and look at his photographs of his childhood age, around 20-something or under 20 or 20-something years. You will okay. see that he's not a Nigerian. Thank he you. doesn't, he's a Guinean. Now, Babari Wala, Emma Dailuru, let the judges do their work. You were swearing in judges the other day. Irol and Pao, you were telling the big lies. Let them do their work, do the right thing. Obi won this election. There is not going to be a rerun. No, we obedient and almost the 200 million Nigerians that voted for Obi will reject rerun. No rerun. Okay. What is rerun? Thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank you. You have to give Obi back Th the mandate. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. All right. Um, the last person that uh, love God is my strength. If you are there, I'm calling you back. You know, uh, I only have. 10 seconds. Okay, thank you very much, madam. Uh, you have two minutes. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Okay. Thank you, everyone on the platform. Thank you, everyone on the panel and the comment section. Good evening, everyone. I'm sure we all have a very good day today. Thank God. I want to say, uh, there's a lady, my, our lady, one of our ladies that just called not too long ago. Uh, the sister Deborah was talking about any way the uh, court case go. We are not looking at any way court case is going on. It's only one way. And that's only one way is for Obi to win the court case. No two ways. We are not looking at whether it will go one way or it will go another way. Only one way, all obedient, we are looking at. And that is for the court case to favor us. So I want, another thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about the first of Sakawa. You can see, you see one thing in life, eh? they say, we sow what we, we reap what we sow. Whatever we sow will come to a bit. We will, if they tell uh, Akamo, first of Akamo, that one day he will come to the Senate and he's going to meet all of that obedient, that is a senator, that will withstand him the way that guy spoke with authority. Everybody in the Senate was silent. He will say, no, it can never be. Look at him. First of all, look as if water was poured, all water was poured on him. And I want to encourage all the other senators who are for the Labour Party, please speak up. Speak up. Don't be silent. Speak up and show all the obedience that are not senators that you people are really working and it will make us glad because OB is coming, it's going to take Thank over you. the government. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank God you. bless you, ma'am. Okay, call us. I'm done. I'm done with the uh, course right now. Okay, let me come back to the panel. I'd like to go back to Madam Helen. Madam Ali, thank you very much for your patience. Please talk to us, ma'am. Hello, good evening, Mr. Elvis. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very good much. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You have eight minutes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Elvis, I I really want to appreciate you once again. I don't think that it will ever be enough. My gratitude to you for what you've done for we Nigerians, the voice that you've given to us, you know, it's um is beyond you know, you know, human you know, comprehension. God just will keep blessing you. Bless your mother in particular, because she gave birth to you know, a child that she raised to be for all for himself or for his family. Thank you, God will bless you. And all, a lot of other people are learning from you. A lot of other people are, you know, lending credence to you too because of what you've done. God will always shine his light on you because of who you are. Thank you so very much. And apart from that, he will shine his light upon your mother. She will be celebrated at all times. When she hits the street, people will say, see the mother of the son who loved his country and made sacrifices. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Now, Amen. I want to you know, refer to the Niger man that was speaking. You know, he said something. He said, we massively, and not just that we voted for you, we supported EPI. He didn't, he didn't hide our means word, you know. So you see the kind of um, porous, you know, um, boundaries that we have. 
you see the relationship and then this man just gets up. I mean, since ever he came in, he's done things without consultation, without bothering. He just gets up and begins to do things like he, 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 he's being remote controlled. And true to I think he's actually being remote controlled because for somebody to get up to want to go to war, you don't consult the people in authority like the Senate. You don't know random to question, to you know, deliberate with the people that will be affected. You just get up and you want to go and fight a war that basically somehow does not concern you. I don't think this war is a war because, you know, because if you even want to look at it, how did he come into power? Is it not the same way? Is it because it's, um, you know, INEC um, had some sort of body that called themselves INEC, and then we had um, people who carried card to go out and, you know, vote. That's why he's thinking that he could, that he, you know, foisted on Nigeria. You know, it's the same thing. So it gives us, you know, it should allow us to breathe. And he said it. So you should just, you know, even though when they said they make a mockery of it, but we need to breathe. This man should just allow us to rest how about you know for for the northerners i really feel for them honestly because a lot of times they don't have a choice even though they could have spoken even though they could have said something they could have reacted they could have you know done something but somehow somehow these people are you know raised to be docile they are raised to be you know to be you know to to be loyal to they are they are elite um, leaders because it's as if they are the ones that make them without them they can't you know, survive so i don't really blame them much you know and i also want to thank god for that you know senator who spoke today mr Ellis, i watching him in the afternoon i i felt good not just that he spoke with so much intelligence, authority, and everything, you know, that you know, comes with. And Thank you. He spoke like somebody I know, and that's like Mr. Elvis himself, who does not mean what who does. But I loved what that man did today. And that's why, you know, people like this should start talking. They should, they should start talking. They shouldn't be silent anymore. I loved also what Odele Mumudu did with uh, on child, you know, on this thing he had with uh, Shem. You Shem, understand? Yeah. People are beginning to, yes, people are beginning to say the truth. They are beginning to say it where it is. And I think we are going to get this more and more. You know why? Because African countries have been kept in a in a place where they somehow didn't believe in themselves. And somehow, right. somehow, one man came out and showed to us that it is possible to be real. It's possible for Africa to stand for self and achieve a whole lot. Because these people who have kept us in this position are not going to ever let us go if we don't wake up and say enough is enough. Mr. Elvis, I'm going to advocate for something. I saw the women, you know, you know, uh, demonstrating. I don't, I don't know when that took place. You understand? But I know it's in the, in, somewhere in the north and they were speaking for Africa to arise, Nigeria to arise. Mr. Elvis, I am calling for the women to lock up. Do you know what I mean by lock up? When, um, I don't know who wrote, whether it's um, who wrote, our husbands have gone mad again and the women took action. It's actually a play that was done in the Greek um, mythology where the women, you know, said our husbands have been fighting, we'll be losing our sons, we'll be losing our men, enough is enough. And they locked up. This time around, side chick, lock up. Wife, lock up. Daughters, lock up. Everyone, lock up. Let our husbands hit the street and begin to talk. Because when we lock up and say, no, 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 our husbands will ask us why. And we say, because you're not talking. That's why we are locking up so that you talk, so that you act, so that you push this judiciary uh, members for them to do the right thing. And for the judiciary wives, lock up so that your husbands will get to know that is no longer business as usual. If they don't do the right thing, then they don't 
come back home and enjoy home and meet who are waiting. There is war. We are waging. We have our Thank own ways of waging the war. So that's my advocacy. Thank you so very much, Mr. Elvis. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Helen. Thank you very much for your uh, submissions and your kind words. Thank you. All right, uh, guys, make going to help me press on the like button. Press on the like button. Help us to share. Press on the dollar sign. Support what we are doing. Thank you. God bless you all. All right, I would like to go to the first person on the panel, which is Madam Nena. Madam Nena, uh, are you there with us right now? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Service. Thank you very much. Sorry yeah. that uh, we have to call others before you because no, it's, a, it's okay. Uh, yeah. I understand. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Service. Thank you, everyone on the panel. God bless you. Thank you so much for those who have submitted already and the people on the comment session. Um, God bless everybody for this dedication. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that I have this privilege once again to be here because for these days I've been kind of busy. So but anytime I have the opportunity, I always come in. So, you know, I'm glad I have this privilege. Yeah. So first of all, I want to start my um, comment from the man that Mr. Enterprise has said. And, you know, I just want to join my voice with the voice of everyone else to, come, to, um, to kind of encourage him. It's important for every well-meaning Nigerian, every well-meaning Nigerian to, you know, and make that decision to be part of the voice of truth at a time like this. Because if there's a time our, Niger our country needs that solidarity, irrespective of tribe or tongue or whatever, in order to make a, the, the desired change, it is, time, it is now. Because for everyone who have eyes to see, for everyone who have ears to hear, we know that Nigeria is in a very critical situation at this point. Because this mistake of a man that they put as the, as the president of Nigeria, this that this that man is that that it, it is proven to everyone who really wants to see that that man is a disaster waiting to happen. It's already everything that has to do with him is disastrous, but at this point, he's a disaster. You know, he's a disaster. Look at how far this individual is dragging it. And that's what happens when you deal with people who have this overbloated ego, where where they think that they can do anything and get away with it, they can sell it and they get away with it. They can they can say to this one, go and they go, they can say to this one, come and they will come. That's why that's in this individual will just open his mouth, say anything, and he thinks that when he say once he says it, it goes and it begins to happen. The same way he stood on the day they were doing their so-called, you know mess of it and inauguration of safety, uh, 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 what is it called? Uh, uh, um, first uh, uh, subsidy is gone and Nigeria is still suffering the effects of that today. Now suddenly an AQ happened in, 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 in Niger and he just suddenly woke up and he began to give ultimatum. And now this is where the thing has landed him. And he's somebody who always believed that once I set my, myself to do anything, I can use every machinery, use every individual, manipulate as many people I can manipulate and get them to do my bidding. And that is why he has the impetus to go to say what he said and then, you know, try to use the, uh, the, the Senate to get the approval to go to war. And, and I'm glad that people are beginning to understand you know, and begin to see. You know, my people have a a, 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 a proverb that says, "Omu jibu wanketa ona hekuya nisinsi." You know, no. In translation, we can say that you know this popular saying that when the gods wants to kiss somebody, they first of all make him mad. At this point, it's very obvious that this man called Tinubu is mad. I'm so sorry to use that word if that is what is unacceptable here, because whenever with everything that is happening, you cannot just imagine what goes on in the mind of this individual when he's making some of these decisions and because he's somebody who has uh, who have always gotten his way with everything that he set us to do using all the machineries of his of his, well, because he's a criminal using everything that he wants to use to get whatever he wants to get so if there's a way he will also want to manipulate this to make it that this war that he wants to go for so that it will be on record that I set out to go to war in Niger and I'm able to go to war in Niger. But the, 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 the God's war has made it, he's trying to make him mad at this point in time because let him set out and go for that war. Then he will see. A lot of, most of these uh, uh, people, who are houses in this, but uh, in northern as in the, but in the border, most of them will tell you that even their wife, I heard one man that was saying that people like us, some of us, we have three, four, five wives, some of our wives and our children live in Niger. That is how close, I said it the other time here, that when I served in, I served in Castana State, do Sima to be precise, I saw how close, like how close that place is to 
to uh, uh, to uh, uh, do something. Like we are walking like this, and we are seeing people on the other side. You know, like few 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 kilometers away from us, and they're telling us these people are Nigerians. That is how close. They are. There's there's not even a wall. There's no wall, called, you know, demarcating this that the place I'm talking about with these people. There's no wall. It's just that the, the place where the eye is like a kind of hilly area, they're like a kind of top on the top of the hill, a kind of, and we were, we were doing our endurance trick on the wall. So that's how close it is. You can imagine, you know, can, yeah, so I, I do not want to, I, 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 that's why I believe that when people say that some of their family members live there, because these people, just for some reason, they saw themselves as part of Nigeria. Nigeria, some of those people that live there, they see themselves as part of each other. So going, I don't, I don't know what is making him think. And moreover, everybody is having this, this uh, concern that this is a country that is sinking. This country that has nothing, the country is sinking. There's, when you talk about war, uh, or going to war, uh, a human, a human capital is involved. Financial capital, everything is involved in it. Does Nigeria have that? And this man thinks it's something that he wants them bad because of his over bloated, bloated ego, where he wants to tell himself, "Yes, I want to go to war, and I'm able to do it." That is unfortunate, and none of him and his family, none of them, will even make a move to be part of it. The the, the gods want to make him want to get him, and they are making him mad. Let him keep moving until he gets himself where he needs to get himself. That is what I have to say because of time. I have to stop it. That. And then again, I, I get concerned when that man, that uh, um, Nigerian man, that was talking, you know, who said that they voted for Tinubu and they voted for APC. I was a kind of concerned. And now that also vindicates some of the people that were saying that during the election, they used to smuggle people from Niger to come here, give the voters card and the vote. That tells you the level of, you know, fraud that happens in our Nigerian election. If this man can boldly say it, a Nigerian boldly saying that they voted in Nigerian election, they voted in Nigerian election, that tells us. And that is why I hope the, the judiciary, I hope they are listening. That tells us that the Truly, truly, that there's the level of fraud. Because when people say it, that during the election they need to smuggle people in, this is it. This man made it very clear. This is how Nigerian Nigerian elections are conducted. This is how this is the kind of crime, crime that happens in Nigeria on on a, on daily basis. And then I quickly go to the case of uh, uh, Festus Kiyamo. You see, when I was watching Festus Kiyamo standing in front of that uh, um the senators. The only thing that came to my mind is that this guy is a career criminal. He is a you know, he was. I was losing him, and all I could ask myself is: so Festus Kiyamu could be this calm. So he could be this calm. You see him with this demeanor of you know a gentle person who is and few few. I like when the host this whole thing was going on. Somebody sent me a text. You know, I I, I link and I opened it. It was him. Supposedly apologizing, but an hour ago, supposedly apologizing. The apology he was giving was trying to narrate how the money was shared, that people like them, the minister did not see a cobble and everything. And when you hear him at that point, when he was making all that submission, maybe we can, Mr. Uh, uh, Elvis, if you can just play that part, a little bit of that, when he was making the so called, you will still see that arrogance. And no wonder he was able to do what he did. And that, thank God. Thank God for this man, for this senator, Dalit Wokocha, that called him out. He takes boldness to stand in the face of evil, to say, call evil, you are evil. Because Festus Kayamu did, we are talking about 52 billion naira. 52 billion naira that went, that today, up until this day, nobody has an account of how that money, who and who got that money. He did it then in his arrogant self. They asked him, how did you share it? Say it's the, 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 the formula is not from the moon. In a very arrogant way, he refused to come and explain and everything. Now, a few hours ago, he's trying to give an explanation he could have given many years ago. You know, but I believe, I am sure, I mean, there's no way you can trace it and they find out that that money was actually given to anybody. That was why it was difficult for him to come and 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 make explanation. Then the, the the point I was saying that when I was looking at him, I said to myself, "So this man can be this calm." You see that manipulative, you know, sneaky, slimy character of 
these criminals because he is desperate to get this ministerial position. Now he's asking like asking like act, uh, acting like a nice person, using sa 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 left right and left. I can count the number of like I, I, I lost track of the number of sa that this guy used when he was talking. Oh sa ho sa ho sa. I'm like, look, what is this? What is this? All in the desperation to get this minister position. And there's one thing he said when he said, I've already lost hope. I've already packed my bag, which means they have been lobbying, lying down, prostrating, rolling on the floor to get this position. And you ask yourself, you're trying to get another ministerial position, the one you got before. What did you use it to do? And I still boils down to what we are saying. My husband will always say one thing. He said, for there to be change in Nigeria, the head must be good. So if anybody thinks that you are God, you guys, the day where they were doing this uh, screening that we saw the young guy, the Dr. Do, uh, uh, Mosu, the one they were talking about his uh, tweet, you know, Marvin was like, you know, there is, even if no matter how the kind of genius he is, no matter whatever, he cannot do much if the head is wrong. And again, speaking on the part of that young man, when I saw that young man, you know, I, I, I remember when initially we made a, 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 a little bit of passing comments about the guy when I think it was Mr. Chips uh, Obibes that was saying that the guy was a moron. I said, no, that guy is smart. He find a way to throw back whatever they threw at him to them. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do at that point. And I say, I'm sorry, but then he made the comment. He said, but you should look at the underlying reason why I said what I said at that time. The point remains that this guy still believes that these guys are morons. He still believes that Nigeria is a joke. But then, maybe he feels like him coming in now, he's going to use his, uh, maybe that anger that he, he had then, you know, probably to change things. But the point remains that there is no way you can make too much of an impact when the head is wrong. The only thing that will work in Nigeria is when the head is right. Because at those points in time, the head is wrong. When we get the head, get head that we are clamoring for, get P2B to take up the leadership position, then every other thing trickles down. Because for now, I don't. it doesn't matter. Maybe here and there, they throw in one or two people that looks like they know what they're doing. But then the majority of the bulk of them are still the same old criminals. The likes of Yosun Wike, the likes of Air Rafai, the likes of Festus Kayamo. Trust me, whatever they do, Festus Kayamo is going to pass. All right. They, they will still break... Uh, they, oh, my time is up already. Yeah. Anyway, they will still they will still bring him to the so it still boils down that nothing is going to change. And you see that desperation because because Sylvester Skyami is desperate to get this this position. How can anything change in a, in a country where the likes of Fesos Skyamo is still a senator? It, it I mean he's still a minister. Things cannot change. So finally for the judiciary, everything has been presented to you. And before I end, I just wanted to ask the question. I've not been in the broadcast for like maybe for some days now. I just wanted to ask, there was a story about Fashola and his house being invaded and blocked. I don't know if there's any information. I don't know if that thing was discussed here or if there's any information about it. I just needed to know a little bit about that. Because when I heard it, the first thing that came to my mind was that the military, if it's true, I don't know, the military, were they there to protect him or were they there to, you know, were they, were they there for Nigerians or against Nigerians? I just don't, I mean, just throwing that question. I don't know how much of that uh, information that the panel has. Um, at this point, I'll just have to end. Thank you so much, Mr. Everest. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Nena. Thank you very much for your submission. About Fashola, I don't really have much information on that. Maybe one or two person might be able to answer that later on. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, let me move on to the next person. My people, press on the like button. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Felix, are you there? Okay, I'll go to give us a mandate. Give us a mandate. Are you available to speak now? Yes, I'm here. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Oh, Thank sorry, you. I'm not sure if you, if you had called me earlier. But, uh... No, no, that's fine. I'm just calling you now. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh... Eight minutes. Thank you. Good evening to you, uh, Mr. Helvis. Happy New Week. Um, good evening to the panelists, um, people on the same time zone with me. Uh, good afternoon to you. Um, people on comment section, greetings to everyone and all Nigerians all over the world. 
Greetings, 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 greetings. Um, well, what can we see at this time than to keep calling out um, these satanic and wicked um, leaders or, um, yeah, I think dealers, like Mr. Felix would call them, they are political dealers. They are not leaders, they are not... Um, they cannot lead because they don't have the power and capacity to lead. They are only but dealers. And what they are doing, even during the uh, screening of the ministerial nominee, is just to strike a deal. Uh, you, Even though that man, um, that, uh, that man, I mean, he did great for calling out um, Festus uh, Keyamu, but... Um, Oh God, give us a mandate. There's so many distractions on your on your background. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but there's things are going on in your background. Like this. Okay. Hello. You are not speaking anymore. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, you know, please stay focused. Thank you, sir. Quiet. Okay, so I think that may be uh, the the fan from my computer making that noise, and I'm switching to my headset now. So I think it should be good now. Let me know if my if I'm clear and um, yeah, good, good, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what they come, if you look at the body language of the people that comes to that um, to that screening, and I and I think I may not even want to speak about about those people because. What they are doing already is not even legitimate because the one sending them there is an illegitimate president. So why do you even care about those ministerial nominees? Do we even accept them as people that are going to govern Nigeria? Because I'm very sure that Peter Obi is coming and so he's going to have his own ministerial nominees. And so these ones are just um, there to, they are, all they are doing there is just to, get payment for the uh, evil that they did during the election. Now, the man said, even though um, they are grilling, we feel, people feel that they are grilling um, Festus Otopokiyamu, he said that it's not that they, they don't want to clear him, but they just want, <laughs> they want him to speak. Should he even be cleared in the first instance? Somebody that mismanaged, I mean, over 700 billion, is it billion or if I have the right figure in my head, or 75 billion era? That person should even be rotting in jail now. Festo should be in jail. Kiyama should be in jail. He should not even, he should, but that's what I was saying that do we even care about these people? I don't care about them because all they are doing is just nonsense. Um, he has, he, you, you can see how he's, he, he, how he's introducing himself to. Festus, uh, sorry, uh, Akpabiole, as he's, um, he said, he's, uh, uh, was his leader, his leader forever. Because they, also, they, were, they were together on, in NDC, NDC, where they stole the money, what belonged to the people. So including Festus, Keyamo, and uh, Akpabiole, all of them should rot in jail. They should be in jail by now. All of them should be in jail. Festus, Keyamo should... What he should be doing now is they are taking him, taking him in Black Maria and they are taking him to a place where, where they can where he will go and answer case. That's what should be happening to Festus Kiyamu. Festus Kiyamu should not even recognize the house of the, 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 the road to the House of Senate to be listed as a, a ministerial nominee. But what, when, the head, when the head is rotting, what, what, do, you, what do you feel? Keyamo, Akpabiole, and most of the Senate, you can see what uh, when they said uh, they would not listen to um, Otoko Keyamo. You can see what uh, the Oshio Moli, what he was doing. And you look at this one, like this, these guys are called senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We, have, we still have a long way to go, but everything is just in on the judiciary. The judiciary should do the right thing by, by 
declaring Peter Gregory will be as a president because he won the election. Now, going to the interview with uh, Ruben Abati had with um, that man from the north. I'm not sure. I think maybe that man is the one they said is um, Dati Baba met uh, maybe uncle, maybe, if I'm correct. No, it's not him. Okay, it's not him. Okay. No, this no. is this is the minister, former minister of health, which the 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 recall he refused to go. Is that man? Okay, they recall him and he refused to go. Exactly. I think, I think he said he said something about uh, about uh, him not voting for Tunumbu and that Tunumbu is suffering illegitimate um, illegitimacy. So, if a northern and a well I think that man, from the way he spoke, is, is, is educated. If he can speak this way, then what does the judiciary want? Because he just told them that Tunubu, <laughs> Tunubu is not the president. That Tunubu didn't win the election. That guy just confirmed to the judiciary that Tunubu is suffering illegitimacy. And so, whether Echo was installing him as a chairman or, and hey, he, don't, he doesn't care. What he's saying to the judiciary is that, hey, guys, Sunumbu is an illegitimate president. He even said he didn't vote for him. Like many Nigerians didn't vote for Tunumbu. So, but another thing that he said in, in his response to, about is that oh this Nijay issue if you strike Nijay you're trying to strike about seven states of seven states in the north the question is if he was in the southwest that this is happening I, I am sure the northerners would have signed an agreement that Tunumbu should go into into Nijay I'm very sure of that I'm very sure of that what goes around comes around so what all of this mess that Mahmoud Yaqub, uh, Mahmoud Yaqub did has brought all of us into, one way is a pain, the other way is an advantage that we all in one way are united in some fronts. Because whether you believe it or not, whether you vote for Tunubu or you didn't vote for him, in some fronts, we are all united in, in, in some fronts. Either which way that man is suffering, he himself is suffering from a renewed shege that is that has been unleashed on Nigerians. It is only sad that people like that will not come out and speak when they need when the nation needs needs their voice. But I think he made some good some good uh, points when he was talking to Abati. They're now going to the young man that went to the to the floor. What that guy did there. You may say, oh, he stylishly also insulted them, but the guy, he, he just, he just like a dog that has that, that decided to eat his own vomit. Hey, if you will not stand for what is truth or what is right, don't pretend as if you're 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 saying what is right. Don't put yourself on the on the limelight, and then when you are when you are now faced with the with the when you're faced when you're up there to speak truth to power. You're not trying, you are trying to, come on, guy. You just, you just mess up yourself on that floor. For me, he messed up himself. It is not by force to be a ministerial, it is not by force to be a minister. More so, under which people, under who are you becoming a minister? Under a drug baron that is suffering from an illegit, that is suffering legitimate, uh, legitimacy issue? That guy, in a way, also ruined his own career, if he doesn't know. Because he has decided to join them. Because regardless of whatever integrity you have, regardless of how clean you are, Tunubu nominated you for a ministerial post and he approved you, and you're going to be under his cabinet, hey, you cannot do anything on your own. Don't forget, you'll be the one that will be, that will be chairing the executive meeting. Should it, should should it, should they be uh, cleared? So he see has influence over them, and so these people like this will be controlled. But 
like I said, are these ones even ministers of Nigeria? Are they ministers in Nigeria? They'll be thrown out in the they'll be thrown out very soon. So that young man would have just owed his integrity, all true to power. Yes, I call you guys moron. Tunumbu send me ministerial nominee. Do even Oga, please hold your ministerial nom nomination. I am cool with my life. Because you cannot be answering, you cannot say you have integrity, and then you are answering to a drug baron, you are answering to a to to, to a to a pie pie machine. The one the man that that, that stole the that stole the money of the people, and you're gonna say, Oh, you are a man of integrity, you are you are clean, you have you are clean, and you're gonna be a minister under, under such person. Not that you will not be able to stand clean. So that young man is just been stained. They've stained him. He's been rubbished. It's not one of them. I don't say what you're saying earlier that oh, we need to touch like not you, you cannot touch like this one. This one has decided to eat and dine with the devils. And nothing can nothing good can come out of him. As much as Tunumbu will be their presidiot that Mahmoud Yakub gave stole the mandate for, and for the number of days, maybe if they approve them, they're gonna be there before judiciary throw them out. That young man has rubbished himself. His integrity, his character, his humane, whatever he stands for, everything is rubbished. He's just been thrown into the drain. So for me, that, that young man would have, would have just would have just would have just sit down. If he doesn't become a minister today, he can he, he, he can become minister somewhere else. Because you cannot say you are the one that called them moron. Are they not moron? That they will go and sit in the house and they are snoring. When the destiny of people is, 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 is in their hands. The destiny of, of people is in their hands. They are making legislation for a nation. They are snoring. They are sleeping. And when they say, let the year say yay, they say yay. When they say nay, they say nay. The eyes have it and they put money in their account. Some of them have been in that house for the past 10 years. They've not, they've not initiated any bill. They've not initiated any bill. All right. So that for me, that young man would have just all his school, ministry and many other Tunumbu that is suffering legitimate problem. More so a drug baron and a thief. Oga, you yourself, in a way, you have just become a thief. That is how I will see it. Because there's nothing good that can come out of these guys. And Oga Bosun, I wish and I pray that you, have, you think twice before you join these satanic people to dine and eat with them. Because your future may be truncated. Look at what is happening to Adams Oshiomole. Take a clue from there. Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Are you the floor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, give us a mandate. Thanks for your submission. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Alexander Gomez. Thank you very much, sir. Guys, please help us to press on that like button. Let me hear from Mr. Chuk Sobibweze, then I come to Engineer Francis. Mr. Chuk Sobibweze, I, I lent you a rushing somewhere. Please talk to us, sir. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Elvis. Good evening, everyone on the panel and uh, those watching us. Um, Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Now we can hear you now. Mr. Elvis. We are... Hello? We are hearing you, sir. Um, good evening, everyone watching us. Uh, good evening, Mr. Elvis. Your network is bad, Mr. Chus. Mr. Chus, your network is very bad. 
I think we need to move on. Unfortunately, I wanted to prioritize because you have somewhere to go. We are next. Yes, and uh, there's a conversation. Can't hear you. Yeah. We can't, can't um, hear you. Yeah, I would like to start with the book. Um, you know, I, Mr. Shu, can you? Your network is bad. You can't hear me at all. Hear me now. Your network is bad, sir. It's bad. It's very bad. Wow. Can Don't you hear me now? Here. Your network is bad. Yeah, we are. We are yeah, but I can hear you clearly. Yeah. Can you hear okay, me now? Go ahead now. Stay one okay. place and speak. Go ahead. Okay. Um, you see, um, I want to start with the, the professor. Yes. You know, this is his uh, way of uh, doing things. It's all about the North. And anything other than the North, he's not interested. This, this is a man, who, if you remember, during the time of the bandits, he is that man who is following uh, Sheikh Bumi all over the place. They're saying give um, amnesty to, to bandits or call them to the table or something like that. And I made this clear. The day you presented that the Senate rejected uh, Tinubu's uh, 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 letter to you know, allow him to go and uh, do whatever with the uh, Niger. I said it here that Tango is, is happening at the border of the North. If it is happening in the South, there's nothing. They will all vote for it and nobody will stand up for, the, for, for, for those people in the South to say, hey, this is our border. If you do this, it's going to affect our people. I made it clear that day and I have no regret about it because I know this is how Nigeria you know, was designed to work. If it is something to do with any border on the South, it, it, just forget it. By now, the action would have started. I think today, it, it, the, 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 the mandate they give them you know, to, to reverse is today. Okay, Mr. Shooks, uh, this is all we can take. Your network is very, very destabilizing. I think you need to come back again. Let me take you off. It's, your network is very bad, sir. You know? All right, thank you. Let me move on to the next person. Engineer Francis, are you there now? Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Eight minutes. Good evening, and good evening, everybody. I have one question to start with. Is democracy worth it? Niger had a military coup and there was no blood spilled. Not one of them lost their lives. And Nigeria had democratic elections. And on that day, over 80 something people lost their lives. So which one is better? The one that we stay alive or the one we lose our lives? Now, let me take it a little bit further. Look at the product that Yakubu gave us. That's uh, Tinubu. Tinubu, please. This thing that you have become accustomed to, which is sniffing people's lives out of them for no just cause or for whatever cause, please don't take it to Asarok. This your reckless disregard for human lives, don't practice it on us. I was watching the TV uh, yesterday and I saw this aircraft that landed in uh, Raleigh Durham Airport. And it had evacuees, US citizens evacuated from Niger. US does not risk the life of one single person anywhere they are evacuating and they have i believe they have finished evacuating all the americans in niger 
and other countries are doing the same. Yet, Nigeria has 303,000 in the refugee camps in Niger. And those refugee camps came as a result of Niger helping us because those were displaced from all those terrorist uh, uh, operations there. Bola Tinubu, before you even give France the go ahead to strike anywhere in Niger, make sure that each and every one of those Nigerians there, make sure you have brought them across the border, brought them home. Please don't even act like a mumu which you have been acting like all this while and let france go there because it's not nigeria that will be fighting it's not ECOWAS that will be fighting it will be france so yes you will justify it and say hey after all you are not sending our troops that you are just giving france the rubber stamp to go and finish them but how about if they grab some of those our nigerian citizens and place them in those strategic areas that they know france will bomb use them as human shields then that means that those people will be suffering double whammy they got displaced from their homeland in nigeria and they got there and then the nigerian president sent somebody to come and buy them please look at this thing and see the bigger picture Tenubu, please. We know that you are leaving uh, that office in a short while, but before you leave, don't finish the rest of the Nigerians that are clamoring on their lives over there. Now, I heard something being said about ECOWAS being the decision maker in this case. That is stupidity. Is ECOWAS now our boss or our new slave master? And then ECOWAS will now be under France. That means we are not even under the slave mas master, but we are under the, uh, uh, the second or the deputy of the slave master. Nigeria is a sovereign state. If whatever ECOWAS says does not compute or doesn't look well with Nigeria, Nigeria should scrap whatever ECOWAS stands for and keep going the right way. In fact, I remember, uh, uh, let me give you an analogy of one pastor that said, follow me as long as I am following Christ. But if along the way, I turn the other way, no longer following Christ. Please stop following me. Keep following Christ. So, Mr. Tinubu, if ECOWAS is not following that thing we have in our head as the way democracy will be, if that is not ECOWAS's position, please don't follow ECOWAS. and take us to this war and what is going on and what is really behind this thing in Niger because it is not what it is or what it looks like remember I'll give you this quote again Genghis Khan of Mongolia he said what things really are and what things appear to be are two different things. This appears to be, oh, military takeover. Military takeover of who did they take over? And how many people lost their lives there? None. The point is that that is a unanimous decision by the people of Niger that they have had it, being slaves the third time to France. Can you even go into the books and look at the way the, uh, their central bank operates? How they put their money in the uh, central bank of France 
and then go and borrow it back and pay interest on their own money. Can you imagine the third, fourth level of slavery being practiced on these, our brothers? Please, if you cannot look at the whole picture and you just want to look only on military takeover, then you are missing the point and you are being the fool. If you want to be a good arbitrator in this case, bring France, bring Niger, and then bring everything on the table. Believe me, you will see how it will work out. Don't go into this war on my behalf. And then judiciary. I'm sure you guys are seeing what's going on. I believe that justice delayed is justice denied. But in this case, I want to also believe that you guys are being meticulous, really trying to, in fact, handle even the collation also. Because when I look at it, it's like two parts of a petition before you. The first part comprises of constitutional issues, which you guys could be able to decide in one or two days. So that you are taking longer tells me that you are probably dealing with the collation. You are probably adding the figures and all those things. But if you tell me that you are taking this long just to decide on whether 25% uh, of Abuja is uh, a must and all those other constitutional issues raised, if you tell me that you're taking this long to decide it, well, judiciary, I'll tell you, it's beginning to look as justice delayed in order to be denied. And while you are doing that, I want you to think also on behalf of those Nigerians who were displaced and in refugee camps in Niger and think about what this man we have temporarily holding the office is about to do with their lives. By the time you come up with your decision, will they still be alive? Or will they have fallen as victims of this right. man's poor judgment? Thank you, sir. Please, yeah, please, judiciary, be wise and be very wise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Thanks for your submission. Oga, uh, CM, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening to you, sir, once again. Please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Okay, um, <clears throat> thank you, Niger Watch. Good evening, everybody. Please, all protocols duly observed. And welcome back once again to our evening usual gathering. Actually, what motivated me this evening was that of, I think I've spoke a little bit of it before, Enterprise, what he said. You know, I want to look at it this way again. You know, there are a lot of lies going on in Nigeria. And that is why people who do not want to reason beyond logic or beyond common sense to bring logic into reasoning, they will always believe everything. Now, the idea was maybe the North won't vote for P2B or the North won't, uh, you know, they do not want to vote for P2B or for whatever reason. That's what people have always been saying. But we know, in fact, if there is any time for me to put forward the law, the argument that P2B won't landslide in the north, it is none. Since time immemorial, or since records began, let's say 1999, when we started this present political dispensation, Obasanjo came in, for whatever reason, the likes of Eru Fire Tiku, they will always play tribal card. In those days, then Obasanjo will win, they will lead Obasanjo to the north, they will vote. Then uh, Yaradua came, they say it's always like that. Then Jonathan came, they say the north don't trust Jonathan, and then maybe they go to the mosque and then start telling them, look, don't vote for a Christian, they will do this, they will do this, they are RNA unbelievers, in all those things that uh, all and all those nonsense. Eventually, he'd been working for them. 
and the most religious irredentist ever that have appeared in the political scene is Muhammad Buhari. He said it openly. So he said by the by, by he say if God gives permits him, he will spread Sharia all over Nigeria. You know, he said a lot of things, we know. So and he's been failing each time he comes up to for election in 2003, he failed. 2007, again he failed. 2011, he failed. Until 2015, the fourth time, because of this president Agbado, they had to go and they do deal with him, and they brought him to power. So that was the glorious time. People, politicians from the north, and then they convinced the Talakawa that is the Megaskia, Megaskia. This is the man. He's not. Uh, he doesn't take money. Look at him. He only have 150. You know those nonsense. This, for the first time, Buhari wore suit with a tuxedo tie, bow tie they call it. You saw it, we all saw it when he was campaigning. They presented him as a very soft, he said, reform democracy. There's nothing they didn't say. He's the man that can further their jihad in the nothing. He's the man, he's their savior. We waited with, with uh, six breath. Now, the man left the north worse than Jonathan. Jonathan, who is even a Christian and from the south south, Jonathan left Asorok so uniform with Almajiri. He wore it with them. We saw it. He said, "Come out of the street. We are brothers. We want you to go to school." He established university in Yobe, in Jigawa, in Kebi, in Zamfara. This was like in Otu Okekiti, Ebony, and then uh, in uh, Nasarawa. I mean, so, somewhere, somewhere in Nasarawa State, that is Lafia, and then in, in uh, Taraba, in Wukare. Every week, he did all this. Why? Because he wanted to show. He even left East West Road, concentrated on the North. He did all these things just for to wait for him to be loved. They said, no. They rubbished everything, even brought in Boko Haram to disgrace him, that because Buhari is their God. Now, Buhari, now, can you compare the legacy of Buhari in the North and Jonathan in the North? So, if there is anything, this election, this has shown, thank God Buhari came. Because if Buhari hadn't been president, people would have said, oh, if Buhari had, the North would have, he would have been the next thing after sliced bread. But look at where he left the North. When Jonathan was in power, Basanjo or even anybody, you feel free. To, uh, governors can go back to their state. The governor, most of the governor, governor of at least Casena, said he's afraid staying in Casena. Being a governor under Buhari, what didn't they do? So why I'm why I'm happy for people like uh, Enterprise is that I do not see the reason nobody can convince anybody again that P2B did not win in the north. No Nordana, they are intelligent, they are sensible. No Nordana can evaluate what Buhari did to them. Their own kit and kin is a Muslim like them, is a Fulani, the people they claim they, they have everything, and he's from Kasena. Yet, look at the, how he left the north worse off than Jonathan left them under Abbasanjo. So, back to what we're saying, that is Baba, that is Baba, Yusuf, that is Baba Ahmed with double master's degree, one from University of Meduguri, one from a university in Cardiff in UK, and a PhD from University of Westminster in London, having got a bachelor's from University of Meduguri too in economics. So he's well educated and I opened two universities, one in Kano and based university in Abuja. He is the, he is the chairman of the board of, the, board of governors. He's well educated by every standard. He saw through all this gimmick. That's why he told Peter B, they've sold a lot of landmine for you in the north. Do not come and campaign now. Concentrate in the south. Let me go and detonate all those landmines. And he did. Because he said it that he told Peter B, don't worry, let me go to the north. I will go and do the underground work. When he finished, he said it on the one in the interview. He said, the north are waiting for Peter B now. They want to receive him. And they did. When Peter B went to Kano, come and see the crowd. He said, come and show me where Muslims buy bread cheaper than Christians. I want to know. Come and show me. And they're all looking at him. According to Dati Ahmed, 
He said, when an Igbo man tells you there's a business somewhere, better follow him. Peter B said, this vast agricultural land in the north, you will turn it to the next gold and crude oil so that a, an average farmer will be having money. The way they have granite pyramid exporting granite, that is what Peter B want to do. So tell me with all these messages that he did, even he went to the palace of the old Emirates and, and, and told them, and they, got, they saw reasons because Buhari messed them up. If your own person can finish you, put you in, in penury, you must have to look elsewhere. So that, uh, so, uh, that Ahmed Nan said, that idea that uh, somebody from the South cannot help, uh, they can't do us well, they will, they will marginalize us. It's a lie. Buhari did all the nonsense he did. The suffering is more in the North. The poverty, in fact, poverty capital of the world is Nigeria. And do you know why? Because of Northern Nigeria, where they call call North. That is, if, if Nigeria is only South South, Southwest and Southeast, we can never be the, we, we be one, we be the, even the best country in Africa. We are poor and poverty capital because of the, those people they call the North. And Buhari caused it because before Buhari, Nigeria was not the poverty capital. Go and ask them, they say Mesha in the North with 50 naira, two, two eggs, two eggs and the bread and tea, all these things. These days, I mean, with this thing, no more. So with all these things, we've now seen that Peter will be won. All this propaganda, thank God, that's why I'm so happy that Enterprise came. I'm so blessed, I'm so happy. It's like you came because of me. Because all this is what is holding the northern part of the country down. If you talk of Islam and the religion, Indonesia is more populous than Nigeria. Indonesia is almost 99% Muslim. Yet, when you go there, it's highly advanced. Why is northern Nigeria not as advanced? Dubai, everybody is going to. Americans want to go to holiday. British people, even Italians that are Catholics, they go to Dubai. Have we forgotten that Dubai is a Muslim country? They have Emir in Dubai, but it's developed. Why? Why is it that in the north, they are using religion to hold people down? So I'm happy that these things are happening. And that is what, why, what Obi should do. Open up the north. Let them, see, let them see the light and behave like other Muslims all over the world. Indonesia is there as a guide. You can't be more Catholic than the Pope. You can't be more Islam than Saudi Arabia. Go over there. They are highly educated. I mean, hi, highly advanced. Are they not the people recruiting Nigerian doctors? Why can't the whole of Kano State, Jigawa Zanfara, be packing doctors from the south to come and treat them? But those, do but those uh, doctors from our side are going to treat Muslims in Saudi Arabia. Are, there, are those people, are they not Muslims? Why? Now, Saudi Arabia is buying the best footballers from the Premiership. I'm not making it up. Go and Google. Ronaldo is playing in Saudi Arabia and he's drawing a lot of people. Everybody is now going, even coach. The England football manager, Gareth Southgate, is considering going to South to to Saudi to go and manage a club. So this is the this is the feudal nature. Why Nigeria is in problem. Whenever they talk this as if as if North is different. Is, is it not the same Islam that they are practicing in Indonesia? Is it not the same Quran? Is it not the same Mahaj that they go inside that they go there? So please enterprise I'm so grateful you came and I want you to spread the gospel. The freedom of Nigeria the, to liberate the masses, it must suffer from the north. Because they have Muslims in Yoruba land and they are, and they are progressing, they are educated, they are moving up. People have forgotten that Ghani Fawahimi was a Muslim. Ghani, Ghani is a Muslim till tomorrow. I, I, I don't think anybody is more Muslim than Ghani. But he fought for human rights. He helped, gave scholarship, educated a lot of people. Ghani Fawahimi Solidarity Foundation, scholarship to every, if he, not only on those states, Anybody, if you are lucky, I applied in those days, I couldn't get because I didn't go through the war, I didn't know. So there are a lot of things, and Ghani is a Muslim. So when people are playing all these religious cards, bigotry, all these things, it pains me. And that is why the nonsense, these people are holding on. The tribunal, I don't know what they are waiting for. Declare Peter be winner, the Northern has voted for him. Enterprise has confirmed it here. Because they've, they've, they've seen suffering. They've, the, the Buhari they've been waiting for. They feel Abacha is not uh, Muslim enough. I mean, uh, uh, Atiku is not Muslim enough. Uh, can't remember, but nobody is more Muslim than Buhari. Oh, say Baba, say Baba, say Baba. 
Now they voted him, he messed up. He's even the worst. So why can't they not? Why do how you know somebody should not come and convince me that the people that voted for Buhari and put one million percent trust in him, he disappointed them that those people are not willing to listen to another offer. That is the that is the way life is. You can't tell me that the northerners are mumu that they start what Buhari did to them, they must be waiting for eh, no, we can't who or who? When you are hungry, do you do you care? Do you care where the food comes from? It is not the color of the cat, according to Mao Zedong, that matter. It is the it is the cat that can it is the rat uh, the rat that can build, it is the cat that can kill the rat. It is not the color of the cat. That's what we, that's why we are where we are now, and it must stop. So I'm so grateful, my brother, for coming. Please spread the gospel. Tell them that you are now free. When they talk of Islam, tell them Indonesia is a Muslim country, the largest in the most populous Muslim country in the world. They are Muslims like every other person. Look at where they are. We, they are women who work in factory line. Nearly 99% of the industry, they are owned by Americans. Nike, as I'm sure, that the, high, the biggest sports manufacturing uh, co co company in the world, owned by Americans, is Indonesia. The women work there, we see them jeans and trainers and t-shirts doing factory line work. They are Muslims. When they need to pray, they go and pray. But in Nigeria, they tell you, oh, no, no, you don't need to walk. You, don't, you see, that is one of the reasons why Obimu has come to power, to break, to really free people. It's not coming to convert anybody, but to tell them that if you want to be a Muslim, there are other Muslims you have to look at so that you can develop them politicians like Erufai using this to bring them down. All the time they are talking of ethnicity, religion, keeping people down. When you see a Muslim in Nigeria, see if you are fighting. Forgotten right. that there are Muslims in Ghana, they are living peacefully. There are Muslims in Brazil. There are Muslims in Argentina. There are Muslims in Uruguay. I've seen Thank everywhere. You. But when you come to Africa, their own is different. Is my time up? Yes, long time ago. Yeah. Okay, I will carry on with Sulet. But thank you, thank you very much, Enterprise, for coming. I'm really, I'm really happy. It's like you made my day with what you said and continue to preach the gospel. That is what that so that yes. Nigeria people can see the light and then find their way. Thank you. Thank you, Augustine. If you have other stuff to talk about, you get that on your other segment. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. If I have to add to Enterprise, Enterprise, uh appearance for me i give him 100 percent for coming out to speak because uh we shouldn't in any way discourage anybody that is coming out to speak against the, this government you know uh i i'm not i'm not interested where you come from you know or your tribe i'm not interested i've never have interest on that i don't care i just see us as nigerians we should speak and speak and stand for the what is right that's my concern about that. Anyway, guys, help us to press on the like button. Share, share, share. Um, the like is currently on 556. I bet we can go 600. Thank you very much, my people. All right. Um, the next person is Mr. Alex. Mr. Alex, thank you very much for coming to the panel. Uh, talk to us in eight minutes. Mr. Alex, are you there? Okay, you're on screen, but you're not muted. Maybe you're not close. Uh, Mike Okosaya, thank you very much for coming back again. Uh, please talk to us, sir. Good evening to you. Yeah, <clears throat> good evening, sir. Thank you very much. I can see you are inside the bus. That's fine. Uh, quickly talk to us. Yeah. The... Uh... My reason of joining the panel today was a, is a, what do you call it? I made mistake on the topic. The topic, I thought it say CJN has already declared OP winner. Then I was listening to everybody talking. I rewind the video right to the beginning. I cannot hear anybody uh, like, uh, jubilating or anything so i was wondering uh, what's going on no. why everybody so, so no, no, when I, the topic the topic that exactly is led i i i study it i say oh i make a mistake you say uh cjn declared that they're asking him to declare yeah, exactly. i thought he said i thought he said declared <laughs> so i was joining the panel 
to say to give my own uh, my own congratulations <laughs> I, I made celebrate. mistake <laughs> it, but it's in advance anyway in advance yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry i made mistake reading the topic thank you yeah all right i will come back to you then come back to you thank you okay sir yeah all right uh thank you very much my people i appreciate it all um Olga Phyllis, we called you earlier on. I'm not sure you're still available yet. When you're available, you let me know. Mr. Alex, I called you as well. You are not available. When you're available, let me know. I'll go to Olga Onero. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Good evening to you. Please talk to us, sir. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Mr. Ninja Watch, good evening. Um, all the panelists that, that have been speaking uh, constructively uh uh the lady i listened to her earlier before i joined the panel mother is he in it now whatever you know she's been very active and wonderful and all the other female contributors i always appreciate the ladies the the spice up everywhere you know um now let me also appreciate uh, those on the comment section and those listening worldwide some that are listening that don't join the panel, you know, I've not joined for a while, but I've been listening, you know, continue to listen, let the word go out, you know. Um, well, let me um, address a couple of issues that have been raised earlier and uh, maybe expand on some other general issues. Um, uh, first and foremost, on the KMU issue, on his screening in the Senate. It's you, it's from my state. I'm from Delta State, but I lived in both Delta and Edo State. So I have affiliation to those two states. You know, I had never been a supporter of Kiamo since he joined the so called evil APC party. You know, in his, in his earlier professional life, we can say, okay. We were proud of him, of what he was doing to challenge the authority. He was one of those that suitable in the 1990s when the man became governor. He was one of those that sued him. Now he's his apologist. I got narrow. The dust is light for where you did. Nor does he have the capacity to be a minister in any sphere. He has shown that he's incompetent. He has nothing to show. For the period he was uh, Minister of State for Labor under the monumental failure of a, an APC government led by uh, General Muhammad Buhari, ably enabled by the current uh leader of the APC, I don't call him my president, Bola Ahmed Tifnibu. You know, he had nothing to show. In light of that, I, I have some of us have been asking, where are the Labour Party senators? Where are the Labour Party House of Red people? Let them speak up. However, when I dug deep, of course, some of us know some parliamentary procedures who have been involved one way or the other from our student uh, union uh, activism uh, time back home, you know, there are procedures, there are rules of the House, of the Senate, that must be followed. If you don't follow it, you may be sanctioned, you know. So, on one hand, I was thinking, is it that the present Senate president is suppressing or the Speaker of the House is suppressing or is not giving chance, which may be a high possibility, to the opposition senators to raise their voices. Even when the LP senator from Abia State, I know his name before now. I never knew he was in other parties before now, you know. But I know we had a very outstanding LP senator from Abia State. I don't know him by his face before, but I know his name. 
you know, when he mentioned his name, Darlington, Woko Chasso, oh yes, these are the kind of people that we proudly will say represent our values and what to stand for in Nigeria, in the parliament, as an LP senator. I will say I'm proud of his outspokenness and the issues he raised. Others, LP senators and opposition senators should take a cue from a honorable senator. I can attach honorable to his name because he has distinguished himself as an honorable, distinguished senator of the House, I mean, of the Federal Republic of uh, uh, Nigeria, as the case may be. Kudos to him. Kudos to him. We need more of that fire coming out from our senators to press them, to hit them hard. The the evil APC, as the case may be, you know. Uh, that is for that on the uh, 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 LP uh, senator. Then on the issue of uh, the what's going on in Niger, I'll first speak on the general terms. No matter how crazy, how stupid, how necessary that the civil rule may look like, for some of us that lived back home under military rule in the 80s and in the 90s, for some of us, those that were older that live under military rule in the 60s and in the 70s, it's the same process. I will never, for me, I'm talking for myself, others may take a different view, for myself, I will never, ever support any form or shape of any military rule in Nigeria ever again. Those that are elected or selected, as the case may be, as civil society people or civil rule people, we as civil society people, those of us that know what's going on, can hold their feet to the fire. We can petition them. We can do many things under the military. It's going to be very very difficult the military people when they come in at force they tell you they want to resolve this they want to resolve that they want to fight corruption the people that cemented corruption in nigeria are the military and they are still continuing up to date the laws of nigeria the present constitution of nigeria was written by those that have their loyalty to the military and some not an interest, as the case may be. Those, there are decrees, they instituted them, and some of the illegalities that are going on in Nigeria were cemented by these so-called military people. So for me, military in Nigeria is a no. Anywhere in Africa, if the Niger people choose to do military people, let them enjoy it. I can't live under a military administration. Again, ever, ever, ever. Never. But if Africans, some African countries choose, that's their part. Let them enjoy it. The issue of the war. <laughs> the decision, the so-called leader of our country i never gonna use him as my president i rather use the leader currently he may be disposed of in a in a short while when the judgment comes at the long run hopefully you know his decision for you to know a leader <laughs> for you to know a good leader who has brain and who can think who can analyze are the major decisions that leader have taken and what the impact of such uh, of such decisions have been on the people what decision is uh, what impact his decision has been on his people major decisions i will give example is rash decision when he first when he was warning that subsidy is gone, Nigerians have not recovered from his bombastic policy making approach to the challenges facing our people. 
that impact is still being felt in Nigeria up till tomorrow. I will say at this moment, it's continuing. It's getting worse. There's hunger. I talked to my my brother today. Earlier, I called me from Nigeria. The things are tough. Things are tough. Things are tough. But for me, some of them, I want them. We want them. But I can't say, my, of course, my brother never voted a PC. No, he never. He don't want them. He never voted it. But others, because of tribalism, I will say it here. Because of tribalism, some people in the Southwest voted for these persons. Because of religion, bigotry, some people in the North voted for this person. However, me and no, Obi got more votes than him. But if people did not vote for <coughs> these evil people, they won't have enough vote to say they want to allocate some vote to them. You see, got some vote from the North and from the Southeast. I mean, sorry, from the Southwest, some state in the Southwest. Like on those states, I can say that. A Kitty state, I can say that. Or your state, I can say that. Ogu state, I can say that. It may not have, OB may have gotten some good vote, but majority of these states I'm mentioning voted massively for, for, for this man because of tribalism. Nothing more. And that's the truth. Let's be, let's call it spade a spade. I don't know how much time I got, you know. Uh, I may want to uh, continue if I see you have some time, Mr. Evis. Wow. Uh, Ogal Nero, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful submission. Uh, it's good to have you on the panel today. Thank you very much. Everybody on the panel that don't talk, I'm going to have our second round now. But before that, I'd like to quickly appreciate every one of you right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my wonderful people. Uh, for your time with us. If you know, so you never press on the like button, please help us to press on the like button and help us to share as well. I noticed that many of you don't share the broadcast anymore. Uh, what do we really want? You know, we want a better Nigeria. We must be able to support each other, you know, to achieve this goal. That's just the fact. We must achieve it together by liking, by sharing, by joining the panel, by calling in, by just encourage, especially those of us in the front line, encourage us to do more. If not, uh, it's not easy, you know, it's not by prayers, you know, even though we know, yes, prayers work, but we got to put in the work for it to work properly. But meanwhile, before we take on the final, final submission, I'd like us to listen to our brother, Ned Media, because uh, I released a video uh, not long. Let's quickly take this video right here. Please, guys, press on the like button and let's listen to this. The Nigerian military is not backing down. In fact, it seems like they've become mm. emboldened. Look at the massive crowd that trooped out to show them their support. And basking on this massive support, they've gone on to close their airspace. The implication of the closure of this airspace will hurt Nigeria's economy more than it will hurt Niger. Although they said they closed the airspace in order to avert an airborne invasion, but the economic implications on Nigeria's economy will be enormous. Look at this cargo plane from Turkey to Lagos. You can see where it's headed, unless they are going to another West African country before going to Lagos. If not, they are already avoiding the Nigerian airspace. And that will definitely cost more aviation fuel, more time, and more money for the end users. Yes, it poses all sorts of problems for flights leaving Nigeria to Europe. They will first of all fly westward before flying northward to continue their journey. Also, Niger might not have the capacity to police their airspace. Niger is a very large country. Do they have complete radar coverage of their country? Even Nigeria achieved total coverage not long ago. Let's even assume that they have total coverage of the western part of their country where their capital is. Do they have walking fighter jets that can chase the intruding aircrafts? Well, that's the question. But Niger used to have Su-25s. No one knows whether they are walking or they are still flying. 
But whether they can police the airspace or not, no commercial airliner will take the risk because of insurance. If someone closes his airspace, you have to respect it. Libya also is closed because there has been crisis there for a few years now. So that leaves Algeria as the only option for anyone going to Europe from Nigeria. And imagine what will happen if this problem escalates quickly. What if Mali and Burkina Faso joins Niger in closing down their airspace? Imagine the distance an airliner will have to fly westward in order to avoid these countries before continuing their journey. That will definitely double the price of the tickets and the passengers will bear the brunt. This means that we sanctioned ourselves instead of Niger. Yes, the economic sanctions from ECOWAS to Niger was too hasty. Is it a retaliation from Niger? They've been under sanctions for the past one week. In fact, they were also threatened with an invasion if they do not step down or return the deposed president. Well, call it whatever you want, but that's their own leverage. That's why it's never advisable to show your teeth very early in the game. ECOWAS started out by threatening Niger with an invasion. How can they do that? They didn't think it through. Now that their one-week ultimatum has expired, they are now saying that they prefer to use diplomacy to engage the Nigerians. Of course, this should have come first instead of threats of an invasion. That was why they humiliated the envoy that came to meet them. They couldn't even allow them to leave the Nigerian airport. It shows that the ECOWAS heads of state were hasty in their decision. And if this is not quickly de-escalated, it might soon result to that. Air France just stopped flying to Mali and Burkina Faso. And there's a rumor that France will go it alone without ECOWAS. Because it's very clear that there's serious opposition in ECOWAS country against the invasion of Niger. So they will go it alone. There's a rumor that they want to do it with the help of two Central African countries. Whether it's Cameroon, Congo. But the most important thing here is that France should de-escalate all their plans for the meantime. They should never consider invading Niger because that will be seriously counterproductive. It will make the coup plotters more popular. They are already popular now. Look at the stadium they filled up. If they attack or invade Niger now, they will turn around and tell their people, hey, didn't we tell you people that France is the problem? Why are they invading us? So they will just add fuel to a fire that is already burning. Even economic sanctions are sometimes counterproductive. All the sanctions against Mali and Burkina Faso didn't achieve anything. In fact, it has made them to move closer to Russia. Yes, even the withdrawal of aid by the EU and France was a hasty decision. They should have negotiated with these guys, hey, what do you want? Why do you think a coup will achieve what you want? Why do you think it cannot be achieved on the negotiating table? They should have tried to talk sense to them, reason with them, then they All right, thank you very much, my people. I think we need to stop that video right there so we can start talking. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, yes, that's true. You no. Know? Okay, yes, uh, sorry, guys. I was reading uh, some of the message. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Uh, we are going to have our final submission right now. We're already here now for four hours plus. So let's have our final submission on what we have presented so far. You know, um, I would like us to focus even more on the pending judgment from the judiciary. Because at the moment now, in case you guys are not aware, judgment can come in now at any time. They could call these people to come in tomorrow. It could be next tomorrow. Anytime. Remember, you know, the deadline is on the 12th, right? If I'm not mistaken. Let me check if I still have it here. One minute. The deadline when they're supposed to pass judgment. Oh, I don't have it here anymore. Uh, I don't have it. The time, the timeline is not with me right here. I'll check the timeline. I'll give you guys 100% update tomorrow. The, I think it's on the 12th of August, the timeline. So, and today is 7th, right? Tomorrow is 8th. So, they don't have no choice than to pass this judgment at least maximum before the end of Friday next week. They should pass the judgment, you know. All right, let's move on. Madam Ahmed, thank you very much for coming in. Say sorry, guy Elvis, for not buying your coffee tonight. 
I loaded my credit in and they tell him, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I understand. You even saying it at all. You already bought it. You have the mind. You already, you already put a smile on my face. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you for your support. God bless you. Guys, press on the like button. Help us to share. So let's move around. Let me go back to Madam Nena again. Madam Nena, thank you very much uh, for sticking with us. You have five minutes. Please talk to us. Final submission. Did you call me? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you available? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, your final submission, five minutes, man. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Um, thank you so much, final submission. I just want to you know address finally this um first of all about the um judiciary and they are coming up. I don't know what is keeping them. I don't know. I, I want to believe that at this point, honestly speaking, I believe that all this even this um um uh, and song of war and everything that you know, and these people are saying. I think all these things are just like maybe gimmicks that they're trying to use to maybe delay the um judgment and prolong his stay and everything. I think all these things are gimmicks. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, look at the massive turnout on the on the street of uh, uh, in uh, Niger. It's obvious that Nigerians they love the military. So as far as I'm concerned, whatever that is happening to Niger, Niger should be able to take care of their situation. Like people have been saying, they've been killed in different countries. Why is why is why what is so special that these people are coming in? You know, that they want to go and do, do this, their what is it called? The military intervention or whatever they are threatening to do. So that tells me that it's like this uh Tinubu's uh, constant uh, constant uh, trip to France or whatever, maybe he's into one one um, agreement or the other with these people. He's trying to please them by acting all this stuff and everything that you do. So we don't need it. Nigerians, it's obvious that they love the military junctures. It's very, very obvious that they love them. They enjoy, they, they love it. They love what's just happened. So you cannot just force them to accept. Tinubu does not, we should not think that the way he forced himself on Nigerians to accept that that's the same way every other country is going to do. Whatever is going to be, it's going to be a serious backfire on him and his people. That is just the truth about it. So they should just the the uh, judiciary, another uh, uh, committee judiciary. Please, I, I don't even know if at this point that we need to be begging them because they sh they they should see the the angle that this country is heading to, and there is they don't have any choice but to do the right. That the only right thing here is to give this mandate to whom it belongs. It is very clear to every human being that people do want this election. With all this, they are magomoga and this, they are senseless delays and everything. Let Nigerians not sleep and wake up and they act the way they act. They, they always act like witches and wizards that they are to announce one stupid one uh, uh, result or whatever, one judgment or the other while people are sleeping. Nigerians will not take it. Look at the massive uh, at this thing in Niger. Honestly speaking, Nigerians are going to troop out on the street because enough is enough. We cannot just continue like this. Just something must change. Something must happen in this country. The way this country is going, with everything that is happening, is very obvious that this is. This is a red cage that is that, that is like that is, is, is sitting on the on, on, on the on a keg of gunpowder. If something is not done recently, if the head is not rescued as fast as possible, this country is sending it. Nigeria is sending in a very wrong direction. So judiciary at this point, nobody is begging you. You have seen all the evidence, the whole world has seen it, the whole world is even saying it that this man that you that is there is an illegitimate uh, president. The whole world is saying it. So if you want to repent. The image of this country, it is all left for you. But if you want to destroy it, it is all left for you. And the Ariwala and your lights do the needful. Restore the hope, restore the sanity, restore the dignity, restore the integrity of this country that is called Nigeria. Whatever is left of it, it is all in your hands to restore it. Do the right thing. Nigerians are waiting, the whole world is waiting. Thank you so much, Mr. Evans. God bless everyone. All right, thank you, Madam Nena. Thank you for your uh, final submission. God bless you. Okay, uh, two persons that will be giving a long uh, minutes uh, today will be Augustium and Mr. Alex, if Alex is available. But meanwhile, let me move on to uh, give us a mandate. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please give us your final submission. Thank you. Well, I think uh, for me, um, in closing, judiciary should just go ahead and um, we we'll just call on judiciary to do the right thing because at this time, that is the best uh, thing that can ever happen to Nigeria. Because um, 
a lot of things are uh, just going on. The nation is not in the right course, and um, we just need for judiciary to, at least for once, listen to the listen to the cry of the people, attend to the calls of Nigeria. Peter will be won the election. It's so it's so glaring that Peter will be won his election on a landslide, and so um, I, I don't honestly I don't really know what judiciary they should not be. What are they even waiting for? That they've not decided on this case when the evidence are overwhelming the evidence the evidence is themselves can prove that they are truly evidence so i mean for me i i, I really don't know and um all other things I, i'll just you know what we'll just be here um doing what we know how to do best and then we'll see how this whole judgment thing goes um and i'm not sure if the date if the date has been fixed yet but all eyes on Ariwola and um, his team. Thank you very much, Mr. Helvis. All right. Um, give us a mandate. Thank you very much, my dear brother. I appreciate your presence today. Thank you uh, for your submission. Let me move on to the next person. Engineer Francis, are you there with us, sir? Yes, I'm still here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Please give us your final submission, five minutes. Uh, Justice uh, Samani, Your Honor, it is my belief, based on how long you guys are taking to come up with this, that you have addressed the constitutional section of the petition. And I am happy and encourage that you guys are taking longer because that tells me you want to do the collation yourself too and add it up and give us the real winner. You don't want to send us to a rerun. I hope that's what you guys are taking this time because if you can, if you tell me that you're taking this time to interpret the constitution, which even uh, what's his name, that uh, Abakoba, Olisa Abakoba, said that the constitutional aspect of this petition can be addressed in two days. And I concur with him. So if you come up with a rerun or cancellation based on the constitutional section, why then are you taking this long? So um, I want to believe that you are handling the collation also so you can give us the exact results that's one and two let me move from you guys and the judiciary uh Tinubu, please in fact i don't even know if nigeria or what the nigerian equivalent to uh, national institute of health or the centers for disease control is over there in nigeria but if they will conduct a test or some sort of survey they will find out and i can say this that the incidence of cancer in those northern areas in nigeria are higher than in the south now let me tell you one suspect the suspect okay there was a time there was a fire in a wildfire in canada the smoke from the wildfire in Canada, do you know here in North Carolina, next to Florida, we, it's like, like you look outside, the whole place is covered with smoke. We felt it. That's how wind can transfer anything. All right, your network like is breaking. Sludge. Oh, excuse me. How is it now? Okay, it's good, but it's breaking continuously. But that's fine. Round up. There are millions of tons of radioactive sludge in the open in Niger around that our lift area, and they emit radon, which is transmitted by wind. And you know they have those high. Uh, Sahara winds. So I can bet you that it even brings it even into Nigeria as we speak. 
you are going to go and attack that nation and then uh, send some more uh, of those things in the air? Or France is now going to do it without you, but you already gave them your blessing. France doesn't care because we are millions of, uh, in well, not millions, but we are thousands of miles away from them. So whatever they do there, will not the wind will not uh, get it as far as France. But we, the next door neighbors in Nigeria, we are the ones that will suffer the brunt. So whatever permissions you guys give France, take it back and tell France that if they attack Niger, that they are now attacking the whole of Africa. As a matter of fact, we are going to attack them back however we can. But please, whatever blessings you gave them already, take it back. We don't want them to come and attack our brothers and then send all those uh, radioactive uh, winds into Nigeria. No. Look at how careful they are being in Ukraine. Being sure that they don't uh, cause that uh, nonsense because they know that anything that happens around that Chernobyl will affect Poland, will affect everywhere. They are being careful about their own, but here we are being careless, trying to let them come here and mess us up. This is an existential issue because that means that whether there will be a Nigeria in the future for the future generation or not, that depends on you guys. So ECOWAS, whatever you did with France, take it back. And Tinubu, I'm beginning to suspect that you are really not a Nigerian because you have never shown the interest of Nigeria as your top priority in anything you are doing so far. It's only 60 days, but you have done more damage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gina Francis. <laughs> Tinubu is not a Nigerian. Um, sad it's sad that when you have money anything can happen in this country you know um we can't continue like this we cannot if you see what is pushing Tinubu to where he is right now because they have money to buy everybody that allowed themselves to be bought so let me move on though let me move on and call on the next person okay um it's gonna be Ogasiem, Ogasiem, sir, please. Or oh, you want me to keep you last? You mute yourself. Or not hear you. You want me to come back to you? No, no, come back to me. Let me, <laughs> let, me <laughs> let, let me go on. Not to worry. Actually, okay. actually, I know the burning issue in Nigeria today. I don't have. I, don't, I wouldn't lose sight of that fact. It's a proper um, going to Niger Republic for war to i don't know in whose interest you see the thing is the simple logic to this is that the military the primary purpose of government is to protect life and properties and that protection falls on the military and on the defense internally it is the police and the secret and the secret service that will be internal, like SSS. Don't not to not to mind, not don't mind the fact that SSS is being a, it's like a, it's being privatized. Anybody they, they they behave like market women. They are ubiquitous everywhere. Instead of being felt but not seen, then the, the internally is the police and the SSS. Externally, it is the military, the army, and maybe the navy for the waters, the air force for air and then the secret service again that will be doing in external external one which we call um, uh, state security is in i don't forgot in central there's something my bank that called it now before you deploy your military it will be in the best interest of your country before you put young men and women in arms way the premium must be very high. By that, I mean that it must have been discussed exhaustively in details at your national parliament, in this case, the House of Reps. In, in such a situation, every member, 360 of them, must stand up and speak. Nobody will say, I second this person or this. 
because you are representing an inch of uh, the, the geographical area called the country. So these are why we do because we know that going for military will be for the nation's interest. Now the question one can easily ask is, in whose interest is Nigeria going to Niger? The fact that Niger changed their government like Nigeria usually do because we are masters of think we have a six military coup since January 66, 29 July 66, 29 September 75, 13 February 76, then 31 December 1993, and then 17th November 1984, and then 17th November 1993, about six times. So since we've been doing all this, we do it out of our own interest, albeit selfish, but we are not doing it to satisfy any country. By changing, Nigeria has been having military coup. We are not doing it because we want to satisfy any country. And no country has ever felt threatened about it as to attack us because we changed. So what is Nigeria going to do in Niger? If France feel threatened, it means because the French interest is served by whatever goes on in Niger. But Nigeria's interest is not threatened. So I stand to be, I stand, I can be, I stand to be educated why Nigeria is going there. So obviously, more so when we have an illegitimate somebody at the Aso Rock, even if it's OB who is legitimate, I wouldn't even advise military. There is no need for us to attack ourselves. Niger is safe. To me, as far as I know, they are harmless to us. Even more or less, now that uh, everything is being revealed, they are the people constituting all this. In fact, if I will even kick against it, but I wouldn't leave you against them. They are the people talking of all this uh, when they are when they, in those days when they are when INEC is announcing a electoral result. By the time they say PDP is winning or maybe one man is winning in Edo or Anambra or or Ekiti or this, they say ah, oh, this one no beer. By the time they remove the, they release the KKK result, it will be in millions. And it is true. You hear two million, three million. You know all this. They don't know that these are Niger people that came in. But be that at his may, I wouldn't because of that leave you one then. So in a nutshell, going to Niger is I mean uh, there's no justification for it at all. We shouldn't even dare it. If his French feel that uh, they are serving their interest, then sort it out. Even then, French from what we've learned now or what I've learned, is really other the fact all these uh, Francophone countries in West Africa, they are really not free. They are still in under colonial bondage. In fact, they are still being colonized. According to Arikana, the chap, the lady that represents AU at the UN or something, she is saying that 85% of the um, resources of uh, the money of all these francophone countries are deposited with the Bank of France and they yeah. pay interest if they need it. You can imagine somebody holding 85% of your money. That person is at your, I mean, it's like holding your life, not to talk of any other. Imbalancing, uh, imbalance uh, of they say balance, but this is imbalance of trade and the imbalance of payment. So there are a lot of things going on. But I'm glad that the people of Niger they've woken up. In fact, there is like the way Nigeria fought for the, the, the what we what we did with Zika, Wo, Sadwana, Madubelo, all the nationalists that fought for independence, going for constitutional conference in London in the 50s. I think that is what Niger is doing now. They want to be really free. Because if you can't have a central bank of your country issuing your, controlling your monetary policy and fiscal policy, issuing and then withdrawing currency, controlling inflation, fixing interest rate, I mean, you are not yet free now. You are not yet free. You must depend on France. And it's at their beck and call. So as far as I'm concerned, I support them. Whatever it will take them to liberate themselves. And at the same time, I urge France not to expose their underbelly because it's a shame. In this day, it's just still looking for who to control. It's, a ter it's, it's morally, morally not, not right at all. At a time when Germany is paying reparation to Namibia, yes, Germany paid some amount of money some few years back or last year or two years ago, and they apologized that because they colonized Namibia, they are giving them this in, re in return because the, the, the name Windhoek is a German name or Windhoek, they call it the capital. So why is France is still talking of uh, what 
they want to uh, be in Africa the way they were in the 30s. It's a shame, really. And I think the world should stand up and tell them. That is terrible, that you are controlling a human being like this. Look at all the men. Thank God that the, everything is coming out. In fact, the people of Niger, Mali, and the others, they've, they've, they've endured more than enough. I doubt if that will happen in Nigeria. I doubt it. You can't you can hold a country like Then Why are they independent? Why are they a sovereign nation? If they can't have the, if you should be putting hands and even dictating to them what to do, oh my God, it can't happen. Even if in a state like where they practice federalism, like in Germany or Brazil or Australia or Canada or US, every state is more like independent of its own, only that they control currency and the immigration and foreign policies centralized. But in terms of uh, you have some measure of autonomy. And that is what Nigeria had during the First Republic, which we were talking of, um, you know, um, uh, um, restructuring so that we go back to it and have some measure. Then can you then imagine and a, and a country with a flag, national anthem, and an identity under the UN, yet being, I mean, they are not as free as maybe the Western region or Eastern region or Northern region or Midwestern region was in Nigeria in those days or some states in the regions of Germany or Canada, Australia are now. So it's a terrible shame. Tinubu should not go there and model things up, please, in the interest of uh, humanity. Just stay clear. The, worst, the best you could do for them as fellow Africans is you appeal for peace and then let, let, let dialogue, let dialogue uh, prevail. That's why I said somewhere that at a point like this, I feel I'm a diplomat for Nigeria. I will play the Oyibo people their own game. All I will do is that to slow things down, ECOWAS committee of maybe eight, we meet in one remote area in uh, Burkina Faso. After that, we rise, drink tea, pose for photograph, and they move to another remote area, maybe this time in Ghana. After that, we come, this is what we'll be doing. Instead, we call friends to come and present their own case. This is what they want, somebody will do. Every country will have their own peace and void. We can't continue, you know, to be throwing bomb and grenade in African soil, it's not worth it. Because like Bill Clinton said, when you open your, when you, re, when you lift your gun, innocent people will die. You are not likely to get your target. Even if you get your target, you are going to get the one you did not target. So the casualty will be more than you anticipated. And being this type of war, you know the day you started it, but do you know the day it's gonna end? Nobody can tell. Even at that, when you start a war, as you're advancing, People will still call you, come to the, um, uh, the dialogue table. The dialogue table you refuse to come to maybe weeks or months or years when the war started. Now you will be going to dialogue table. So if you can finally go to table of dialogue or table of brotherhood, like Martin Luther King said, why, why not start it at the earlier stage so that you can save the, the cost in humanitarian lives and then all those things. So in, invariably, I'm saying, Tinubu should not contemplate at all. I thank God that the House voted for it. Although the sentiment people are expressing is quite genuine, like Chuk Sobibu, as they said, when he was starting before this thing, is quite genuine because in Nigeria, we don't usually see things from the practical prison of, uh, you know, responsibility and merit. We always think of whose who's, uh, ass should be kicked. Oh, yes, go and kick that side. It's not. I'm not, I'm not from Niger. I don't have anything to do there. That I feel for humanity. There is no, there is really no reason to go there for, for, from a Nigerian point of view. And I don't think there is reason, reason for any other African country, be it Ghana, be it uh, Republic of Benin or Togo, to go fighting them for what? They change the government, which they feel is not responding to their needs. By the way, is that not what uh, Megafuli did in Tanzania? Only that their own, they did it uh, in democratically. Britain is mining the gold in Tanzania and giving them peanuts like France is doing with uranium in, in Niger. Mega fully bachelor's degree in chemistry, PhD in chemistry too. He came up and said, look, he won the election and called Britain to say, look, we have to renegotiate this. You'll be mining, you can look at how backlog we have to pay all this. Otherwise, we terminate it. Britain agreed. Yes, they agreed. But whether that led to the man's death too, because there are certain things you might not know. But however, Tanzania recouped a lot of millions of dollars. And with it, man, they started building massive, a brand new airport, a roads all over the country. 
developing their seed. Imagine, just talk of Tanzania. That's why World Health now read them. I mean, what they call a middle income country, no more third world, no, not a low income anymore or high income like US and Canada or Switzerland. They say they are middle income, which means they are higher than Nigeria. Life expectancy obviously will show, show up. Human development index is going up. They are implementing a, a what is it called? A sustainable development goals. They've moved from MDG, Millennium, which will be implemented in Anambra State that won him award. So they've now moved to the second one, which is SD, SDG, Sustainable Development. So look at where Tanzania is because of the vision of one leader and they renegotiated. What France should do is, it doesn't mean you go back. If you are stealing my property, I didn't know for years. Did I discover is the day we renegotiate? Now, the, with the Boki people in uh, Niger, they've come up. They've seen it, that how come they should be having resources and yet they are the poorest country in the world they have to ask themselves a question say what is happening and even if not for anything if i the way i am i mean in, in, inconsequential insignificant should know what happened in tanzania why shouldn't the people of niger know that in tanzania look at what happened that's why their country transformed so they have to call france and say look this uranium you are taking no, no, no. We are not getting peanuts from you. You have to renegotiate it or we nationalize it and take it. Then you negotiate and then you give them what is their due in that case so that you don't lose the whole thing. And then with it, now you see Niger can transform. If Dubai, a desert can become what it is, why can't Niger? Must desert be desert forever with resources you can transform anyway? So the logic, if I'm a diplomat, I should be calling France say, look, Come to the table. This is what we do. I cite the instance of uh, um, uh, Tanzania. Of course, one good turn deserves another. If something something is done somewhere that is good, you copy it. South Africa did the uh, truth and reconciliation under Desmond Tutu. The British, despite their advancement with the Irish, after signing Good Friday Agreement in 1997, that in, in the end collapsed or it, it didn't work, to, to some extent, they invited the uh, Desmond Tutu to cheer the uh, what they did in the in I Ireland. They invited him, despite being a black man. They say, "Come, you did it in South Africa. Come and help us here." He did. He cheered the, the one of the, IR, uh, the Irish. So I don't see there's nothing in this world. The idea of uh, the West, you know, it all or the the black man should be lauded, you know, should be left where he is. No, no, no. He should stop. After all, why, 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 are, why are we in an inter interconnected world? The people of Niger have seen that they are impoverished, not as a result, although their leaders could be corrupt, they, they found out that the resources, they are not getting what they want. And his France is taking everything. So why should France even, even if they say they don't want France to do it again, that, that is theirs. You can be in, in France, in Paris, and be controlling what happens in uh, Niger. It shouldn't be. So if you want to be a good neighbor to Niger people as a former colonial power, you go and renegotiate with them, give them their due. They've woken up. You've been deceiving them before. Now the scales have fallen off their eyes. They now know what to do. So that's why they are, they've done it by force. Say, let's change the government and then seize all these things. So you go and negotiate, threatening them that you bomb, you bomb who? After bombing them, then what happens? Then you, you take over Niger. It's not gonna happen. It's, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't it, it wouldn't happen, and it's it's not going to be possible. So France, whatever they are doing, let them swallow. Let them just swallow the what is it All called right. there, and then and then come to the negotiating table and negotiate with them. As for as for Tinubu, please steer clear. Nigeria has not got any money to go and waste anywhere. Besides, our interest is not protected. I mean, our interest is not threatened. In, in 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 Niger, and we don't stand to gain anything by going there. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ogasi, and God bless you. Thank you. All right, uh, my people, uh, let me quickly give opportunity for Takuma. You just joined us right now. Uh, Mr. Evis, I greet you very well. God how far, you. my lovely brother? My brother, they know say I live for background every 24 hours, seven days a week. Yes, I believe sir. you. I've I believe not come you. to the show, but uh, I'm there. <laughs> You guys are doing very, very well. God bless all of you. Thank you. You see, like that, I want to quickly say something. Mm? Yeah. Timaya sing song, say me, I know they do gaga, do gaga, I just do pay raga. Make I tell you all this in a gaga. They can't do anything. You see, now with the language of uh, Tinubu, we now know clearly who ordered the massacre at Lekito Gates. 
because that is his approach. His approach is violence, criminality, and you know, chaos and uh, uh, causing confusion everywhere. We know who ordered the killing in Lekito Gates. But you see, I thank God that um, the Northerners have confronted him head on. And uh, I know one thing for sure, Nigeria Army, they are not equipped, they are not mentally ready, and they don't have the military strength to stand Niger. So that chapter is a closed chapter. France is, uh, uh, unfortunately, they have been exposed. You see, Nigeria, well, there's a video I saw on your platform, on the WhatsApp uh, platform, about uh, this uh, Italian uh, was it a prime minister, one woman, who made a submission on how, you know, she thinks and she believes that Europe is supposed to be relating with Africa right now. You see this, uh, mm. they say any, any, you saw what? Yes, I'm not sure I've seen it. Yes, it's on your platform, it's on your WhatsApp platform, very, very important. If uh, I, I, can, I could I look for it and forward it to you, I think uh, it's something that you want to look into. You see, the truth of the matter is that they say when person wake up at that time in morning b exactly africa have been sleeping you understand but now africa have woken up and this young man in the military i'm not talking about i believe they are in our nigerian army too but across uh, west africa this group you are seeing is because the people are suffering at midst of abundance of natural resources and regardless of the fact that they are on uniform, they are not spared from the suffering because they have family members, they have brothers and sisters, and they are seeing what the Western uh, Europe are doing with the resources that their motherland has. And they have decided to take you know, their destiny in their hands since the puppets, our leaders, will not do the same. I am encouraging Niger, uh, the Nigerian military to follow sorts. I, there was a speaker speaking here right now saying that he has seen a lot of things during the military and uh, he do not wish, he doesn't want to see military to come over. They say, na condition, then they make a fish bend. The current state of Nigeria right now, I'm not that young, I'm also not that old, but I know that in my very young days, the economy and the lifestyles of Nigerians were much better during the military regime. At least, I saw IBB, Abdul Salami, those people. Even like uh, the late, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Abacha, even though he was a, 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 a satanic human being. But what our leaders are doing to us right now is worse than the military, because even the military have some sense of discipline. These guys have no discipline. So I heard that uh, there are some people that are going to meet uh, the judiciary to pervert justice. The likes of, uh, what was the former Lagos State Governor? The likes but, of uh, Wike? The likes of... Uh, Fashola. Or yeah, Fashola. Okay. Okay. And I heard that uh, uh, Fashola now carries military. It's no longer police, now military, and then they gather. That is to show that, uh, if that is true, allegedly, I don't have that information to be confirmed, but allegedly, that is to say that there, there's something that is going on uh, in the background. And I want to join a speaker that made a, a submission, was it yesterday, who said, who was really parrying, saying that uh, Nigeria should not wait for the decision before they take action. They should not wait because we were waiting and believing that uh, uh, INEC would do the right thing. And eventually, look at where we are now. So now that we are hearing rumor that these uh, people are trying to provide justice, Nigeria should begin to identify their location. Because if they need to use one person to do example, I'm telling you, that is, has been my position, and that will continue to be my position, even though I respect Nigeria's platform, then I still stand that one person need to fall down as an example so that the people who are to render justice to Nigeria will get the message. 
Because when all these uh, criminals are still parambulating, even with security, they look as if they have resistance and they can, you know, do what they want and get away with it. One person needs to go down before the judgment. That's what I mean, no? not after the judgment. Before the judgment, somebody needs to fall down. All right, all right, all right. We don't support a uh, discussion like this. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you yeah. very much. I did, I did. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jija Breadman. You know, uh, fortunately, this is not the kind of uh, discussion this channel stands for. Um, I'm not here to encourage or anybody to fall anybody down. I'm here to tell the judiciary to do the right thing. You know, like I said before, like I just stopped Jija Breadman now, I can only stop everybody on my panel when you go out of what my channel stands for. But when he's out of my channel, do I have right to stop him? The answer is no. So that's why the judiciary have all the opportunity now to do the right thing because my power ends here, ends with my channel. You know, you can't say this, you can say this. Now only here it ends. After here, I can't control anybody. You know, so when you push anybody to the wall, it's not up to you, judiciary. Yes, it's up to you. Thank you very much, um, my people. I would like to call on the last, uh, the next person to speak to us. Um, Oga Onero, please give us your final submission. Five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Evis and the fellow panelists. I want to uh, quickly address a couple of issues. Uh, from the last video you played on uh, the Niger crisis. Well, I will still uh, reiterate, <coughs> excuse me, or reinforce my personal opinion that I never, ever want to live under any military government, no matter what it is. I repeat, no matter how Benevolence, they may seem to be. They only do that at the beginning of when they take power. Give them six months. Give them one year. Give them two years. They turn tyrants, impunity. Even if they improve the economy to an extent, which I know they don't, their level of corruption is worse. They will pull somebody from Kirby to come and be administrator in a do state. They will pull somebody from Kano to come and head the Irish Delta State. That is their structure. More annoying is the militarization of the constitution of Nigeria and the laws that govern Nigeria today. The laws we have been complaining about was instituted by these evil military people. On the Niger side, if they want to military to rule them, that is up to them. That is why we are support what every other person is saying. The Nigerian government should not use any form of force to kill any African brother in the interest of any Western world or even in the interest of Nigeria. No killing. We are against that. No buying of anybody in Africa, by Africans. We are against it. I'm against it. If they want to rule by their military, let them enjoy it. If that's their choice, at some point, if they want to revert, it's up to them. You know, that's on uh, the Niger side. Now, back to Nigeria, which is our concern, the tribunal judgment. What we say, you know, as on the uh, judiciary, I commend all obedient worldwide that have really been putting their eyes on the judiciary, calling them out. Even when it's alleged, he's putting that <coughs> on their toes to do what is right. Whether it's the CGN, <coughs> oh, excuse me, whether it's the CGN, whether it's uh, Are you the okay? government. Yes, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I just drank a little water now to clear my throat. You uh, know, so. Please run up. When, okay, okay. Oh, is it five minutes? I just started. Shit. Yeah, this five minutes. Very sure. Oh it's my goodness. Two okay, minutes, okay. Not two minutes left. Let me put it in two minutes. Okay, I'll round up in two minutes. My predictions on their judgment, likely judgment, 
two things they likely going to do. They will, they may order a rerun on one hand and also disqualify Tinubu on three grounds. On the APM petition that invalidated their, the Tinubu nomination as the case may be because he delayed in picking a replacement for uh, his, his um, uh, placeholder, VP. And then the further fifty thousand dollars for Fisher as petitioned by the PDP, by the PDP and uh, the LP, as well as uh, the forgery certificate forgery petitioned by the PDP, and the NYC certificate manipulation, which have a decule as against Bola Metinibu. Then on the other hand, they may. So the rerun will include LP, PDP, and every other participant before If they want, I don't know how they're going to maneuver and let Tinibu not be disqualified. They may just order a rerun for everybody so that peace can just reign in Nigeria. Thank you. We don't, me, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need a rerun at all. I'm just giving my prediction of what they likely going to do. No, yeah, but we don't want that at all. Anyway, thank you very much, Oga Nero, for your submission. Uh, that is your opinion, and uh, everybody is to their opinion. But for me, I don't want a rerun because a rerun, a lot of people will not have time to go on the street to go vote again. So, it, and, and Nigeria doesn't have the money to conduct another election. And we can also conduct another election under fraudulent, satanic person of Mahmoud. He's still there. He's still the head of INEC. So we should do There's every reason for the run not to work. You know, we shouldn't embrace it at all. All right. Uh, let me move on to Ahmed. Well, let, let me just add to what you said. Personally, my, my desire, yeah, just let me just add 20 seconds. Give me 20 seconds. My desire is for them to declare Peter Obi the winner. We will all be excited. But from what is happening in Nigeria, I don't know if they go good or not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Madam Ame Bright, uh, good evening to you, ma'am. Please talk to us. You have five minutes. No, your network is not good, ma'am. We can't hear you. We can't hear you at all. At all. We can't hear you, madam. It's okay. Hello? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Hello. Madam, we can't hear you. Your network is bad. I have to remove you. I'm sorry. It's disturbing uh, the broadcast. I don't know what you are using. Sometimes when you come here, your network is good. Sometimes it's not good. I don't. I wish I can help. You know. Uh, thank you very much, um, everybody. Right, I believe everybody have given their final submission. So, uh, Oga Felix, you did not hear from you all day. You know. So and um, okay, everybody have given their final submission. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you right there. I would like to appreciate those of you that came to the panel today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, God, now God bless you now. Thank you very much for your consistency. To so many of you right there. Augustine, thank you very much for coming in. Mr. Alex, uh, the good thing about it is that you talk on the phone, but you could not talk when you were on the screen. I don't know what happened. You know, thank you very much, Madam Nena. Give us a mandate, my brother. Thank you very much, Gina Francis. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you. Um, thank you, Mark Consaya, Oga Nero. Thank you very much. Uh, Jaja Bredma, I, I'll give you another one minute and I'll give Augustine one minute soon, you know. So, um, I would like to quickly appreciate uh, those of you that supported me today financially. Adela Jaugumbi, thank you very much. Uh, I want to be Ferdinand, thank you very much, sir. Lady Eugenia, thank you very much. Um, I do like watch, thank you, Martin Benjamin. Thank you, my people. I appreciate every one of you. Dr. Alexander Gomez, Zipporo, and God, and God bless every one of you. Then we have a uh, show. Show, show, thank you very much. And George Luchel. And God, God bless you now. And uh, for my wonderful people that called in, thank you. God bless you all. For those of you I could not pick your call, understand with us. If you're not reach your turn today, go reach your turn tomorrow, please. 
we don't be quick to blame us. You know, we don't deliberately ignore people's call. Some people call this broker sometimes more than 50 times. You still don't get to their turn. Please don't don't take it personal. Some of you do take it personal sometimes thinking that we deliberately don't want to pick your call. As far as say, ask me your be so. I don't have any issue with anybody on earth. So I don't get, I don't even get space for my heart to keep anybody. To be honest, if I verse for you, I don't finish. So I'm not that kind of person. If you understand me, eh, I'm a very total different person. You know, I don't have that time, please. I I do a lot of research every day, put things together, looking forward to my brokers, coming on air to talk to people with legitimate information and all that. That's my business. Say for me to come and be say, please, if you not pick your call, understand with us. You know, somebody actually sent me uh, a message that you'll be calling, calling, you have, according to your statement that you have called more than a thousand times. We know they pick and we know they let you, then you, you end up by saying that we know they let you, they enter the panel. I don't even know you. And according to your message to our WhatsApp, that's the first time you are messaging our WhatsApp. So there's no history that we have communicated before. There's no history that you send any message to Nigeria Watch WhatsApp number before. You know, your message that I saw today is the first time the message is coming to our phone. And I don't even know you now. If I know you, you know, we know they select people. You said we deliberately don't want you to come to the panel. To be honest, sir, I don't know. Even though you are new on the channel, we have a way of asking people, is it your first time on the channel? And uh, where are you joining us from? So for me, Oga, Madam, whoever you are, please, not the two verse, not today, this life. We don't know. We don't know. I would tell offend you, but just take it easy. Oga Felix, uh, we don't call you for the past 72 hours. You know, answer us. But I'll give you two minutes to quickly talk to us. We're rounding up now. My beloved, my beloved brother, I told you the last time, if you call me twice, I don't agree answer. Carry basket. Finta me come up for the panel. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Talk to because us. Because my, my network, I, I put on the private chat before that my network was a little bit frustrating. Now the network, now you hold me since so when they try to fish some up later, I slip off, leave the phone for one corner. I was so right. surprised. Uh, two minutes See, you get, sir. I really understand. That's fine. Give talk to us two minutes. Uh, for for the one where I come meet, as for we I want to start for Kiyamu, he never two see minutes you get to two minutes. No problem. With the two minutes, the two minutes is 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 more than enough. And not be no. my beloved sister, sister Rita. Uh. For the for for for, for first us Kiyamu, according to my beloved sister, sister Rita, make make the entire house. I said it the other time. If care is not taken, democracy started in Tinubu regime and it will end in its, in its regime. Mark my word. We are not praying for that, but judicia judiciary, whether you like it or not, you must interpret the constitution and the law of our beloved nation. 25% in FCT, double nomination of Shetima, $460,000 provision in, in US is more than enough. Even though that they treat you now for back here and say, we don't give you now money, allegedly, we now need to do everything possible in our favor. Decline. If possible, refund their money for them. Do the right thing if you don't want to end democracy in Nigeria. It's a sad warning to you all. We are not begging. We are not begging. Don't think that we have been quiet ever since. We are just only waiting for your final judgment. If you are going to interpret the rightful constitution written by Nigerians, or you are going to turn it upside down and read the backside of it for, for us to, to hear, then you guys, you people, we know the stuff Nigerians, where meaningful Nigerians have made for when you put the when you put the go to the to the war, when he turn back, um, he will bite. Be ready. We are ready for you people. This is not business as usual. Thank you. It's time, it's now or never. 
for Iran, we don't have any money to spend. As the economy they go, so now we work on the budget another billion billion. We'll be said offer give they should first and foremost ask Mahmoud for the money where they give her for the loan. May we fair collect that one. That one will solve a low problem for the economy now. Because we can't accept the wrong day, night, money. We can never accept the wrong from you people. I hate for okay. now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we shouldn't accept it. We shouldn't embrace it. We shouldn't discuss it because we spent almost half a trillion naira for the past election. Half a trillion. In case you guys are not aware, you know, about 400 billion naira. Now we spent for that past election. Half of that money, the Mahmoud Karan chop. Exactly. Hmm. Whether your Jews as they like. So half, half a trillion, trillion. You don't you don't count trillion before you know i be you know this is what these people used so we don't have nigeria is broke a lot of people are suffering in this country so we cannot afford to even if 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 judiciary are not satanic they shouldn't even call for a rerun where's the money you have to have some sympatheticness for this country you know you have to have empathy for this Mr. Country, Mr. for Mr. you how would you de declare a reroll? Re so, sorry to interject you quickly. See, yeah. they're not going to declare a reroll. I'll tell you why. My reason. The judiciary, they're supposed to be learned. Now, do you want to declare a reroll who will conduct the election? When the body that conducted the one that you are trying to solve is still the one that is going to conduct that reroll, it's not possible. You understand? All right. Because ideally, I know if they were independent, it's not supposed to be part of the uh, defendants in the uh, uh, presidential election petition. For the fact they were part of the defendant, that means they cannot conduct any wrong. So the judiciary will come out with a verdict. And failure to come out with that verdict. This is my one minute, Nanja Watch. I'm sorry to interject you and those summarize here. Thank Let you. me say this, they return that to my last submission. Ninja Watch does not stand for any violence. Ninja Watch does not stand for any anarchy. Ninja Watch is a political platform where Nigerians come to express themselves and share ideas, but with a verse. Some people are vexing. Many people are vexing. We cannot express it here. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Obviously, I know. I know so many people diverse. <laughs> so, a lot of people, a lot, a lot, millions of Nigerians are very bitter right now. So that's sure. You know, thank you very much, everybody. Uh Gassian doesn't look like he's there. I wanted to give you a minute as well, boy. No, I am. Oh, yeah, okay. I am. Okay, no. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank One thank minute. you, Niger. Actually, usually the last word belongs to you. Belongs to you in the sense that uh, We've come a long way, like you know. Now you started, you know when you started, and then until we brace the tape, the the alota they say must continue. But from all indications, the gospel you've been preaching here, the enlightenment is not there. They say all eyes on the judiciary. Everybody knows what is at at stake. That all this they are doing shenanigans. Now they are talking of <laughs> that fashion issue. What I want to clear is. Is there really? Is it really true that soldiers couldn't off his uh, residence in uh, Abuja? I don't know. For whatever reason it may be, there must be an element of truth there. You see, what they are trying to do when we say all these things, they've taken Nigerians for a ride for a long time. They had better. They had better. Just declare P to be winner. This and I, I don't see anything before. If you talk of it, because the way to do it is this. Only I don't have. No, there's not much a time. The way to do it is this. Before you talk of rerun, it means that the people in the first ballot they are neck and neck. In other words, they are everything is tied in every way, which is not true. Which is not true. You don't go to penalty shootout if they say if if one side is leading. 
You know, that is when you say there's no way we've tried penalty, we've tried 90 minutes, no way, we've tried this fat time, no way. Therefore, let's go to penalty. That is when you now talk of this. So, what they, when they are playing all this dangerous game, they should be careful. That's what I'm only asking. And Niger Watch, let's still come here and be doing the business. Because Nigerians are listening to us and they've seen it. There is no way, there is no way this election cannot be delayed for whatever it is worth. There is never, there is no, no, nobody can accept that. What is going, what is happening? I don't pray for, you know, a misunderstanding or something like that. Oh God, I don't pray for all those things because I don't even like it. I like, I don't want to waste the red oil. But the thing is, you can't push the people to the wall. A lot of people invested a lot of emotions on this election. No election has been like this since records began in Nigeria because from both diaspora and nigeria people mobilized people paid money from abroad go and get your pvc please try and vote this is a papa mama picking they printed it put it on back of your mobile phone You'll be looking at the logo it will be won't be there all you see is we did everything humanly possible at no i mean at a, at a personal cost to each and every one of us so for somebody to feel that they can just rubbish it and feel that it's inconsequential, well, may God help the person. But as far as I know, I know that uh, something must have to give, and this is the time. Because at a certain point in one's life, Nigeria must right. have taken a stock that, look, it is now or never, and it should be now. So please the panel or whatever, just declare the result to give Nigerians Christmas ahead of time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very and, much. And uh, to, to add something to what you uh, said earlier, um, uh, CJ, uh, you remember this issue about fashion, right? There must be some truth about it. And I think that is what led Festus Koyamo to package his whole family and was about to flee before they called him for this uh, uh, confirmation hearing. So I think they are getting the hint that the people are not happy with them. Kayama may not be the only one that was planning to run away with his family. Or oh, some of them must have run away also as we speak. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Um, we need to end this broadcast right now. Um, tomorrow again, by God's grace, we'll be coming back here. By 6 p.m., I might randomly come out. As you all know, my ear did there, my eyes did there. We don't know. Breaking news can come out anytime. So you guys stick with us. If you know you subscribe to Naja Watch, press the notification bell because you don't know when you go when you go sets. As you said, exactly. <laughs> yes, so I just want both in away without press and without their life already. So we're gonna get that one for mine. So subscribe with us, make sure that notification bell. Turn it on, turn it, put it for all so that you not, you'll be notified whenever I'm on air. I appreciate every one of you once again, everybody that came to the panel. God bless you, all my people. I appreciate you all. We argue here every day, we agree, we disagree with each other. Let's always show each other's love. You know, I appreciate you all. Uh, my people, right down the comment section, Remix K, I can see you right there. God's grace, thank you. Paul Carter, thank you. Look up, look up. Thank you very much. You say, if not a uh, platform like Niger Watch, I won't have lost hope uh, in Niger for Niger for Nigeria. Okay, I understand. Yeah, you know, many of us here we are giving ourselves hope. Thank you very much, uh, Mother of All Mommy Diaspora. Thank you very much, Mommy. We appreciate you. We love you for all you do for us, um, Madam Amen Bright. Uh, thank you very much. Sad that your network was not good enough today. But hopefully tomorrow you try again and be good. Oh, you'll be saying I post out a link. Oh, it's too late now. If I go post out a link now, not be only you go come in. You go reach <laughs> you go reach two million people will go pack enter this panel. Even though that one minute, I will give all of them. I speak they talk to you, so we need to wrap up. But tomorrow, another day. No, 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 give them, give them Niger watch. Don't worry, give them. Give them. Give, give them, them what? No, put the link, let them come. Even if it's for 30 minutes, give them because I know I know what your platform means to most people. It doesn't oh, mean. Even if, please, 
please, even if it's for 30 minutes, tell them 30 minutes, then share one, one minute or two, two minutes. I don't, it's, please, just okay, give them. Okay, Madam bride, come in now. Mona, quick, come in now. Only one, one minute, I want you give one, one minute. Oh now, because I say one minute, okay. Now, one minute you talk on Garcia. <laughs> okay, I don't increase them to two, two minutes. How, no, how about, how about one minute from me too? So that would be, be two, two it, minutes. It becomes three minutes, man. Oh God, oh God. Please, Fine. please give them. You know, you know, people come here to relieve. Uh, it's a lot of therapy we receive here, to be honest. Because particularly when people in Nigeria are listening, people call me to tell me, say, look, they hear Nigeria. I say yes, because nothing we could do because they are really in uh, in in that straits. To be honest with you, be, for, this this is a hope Obi should have been given since May twenty fifth. But look at where Nigeria is now. So please allow people, allow them at least for them to be awake, to, wanting to join. It's the interest that matter, not that we are big, but they want to. So which means it's the interest. But you know, you know, say eh? Augustine, this work on the see so I know now. I know. You, you just say easy, right? Uh, <laughs> how, how you go easy? <laughs> if if which work easy in life? No, you know, it, yeah. do you know what it means to to enlighten people. He thinks it's easy. It's not. I know. We know. But don't worry. The decision you took without consulting anybody, it means uh, you saw ahead of so many people. So that's why people are following you. After all, you didn't put it to vote. Who do we go? He just decided and stuck to it. Even when some of your lieutenants left you or those of your friends. But today, you are being vindicated. So, you send me. So I just saw that uh, right now that uh, RFI was rejected as a minister. No. Um, eh? Yeah, just so it's breaking. Yes, I know. I wanted to discuss yeah. it tomorrow. Okay, but sorry. Let's, let's just take it for <laughs> this. Uh, uh, okay, you know? okay. All right. Okay. You don't oh, say to. You don't say. Uh, Mister Elvis, do you say you are bringing uh, Obaseki and uh, Shwaibu here? Yeah? No, the deputy governor. I did say Obaseki. Deputy governor okay. Obaseki. Is that okay. is that Shwaibu? Uh, yeah. yeah. Philip. Okay. 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 Is he coming to answer query or what's no query, whatever no it is? Query. Whatever I'm it is. Select, I'm gonna select people that will join us if if he allows that at all, you know, that will join the panel. Because what? um I don't want people to come in and start insulting my guest oh. all the time. Okay, yeah, you know? yeah. Yes, you know, it's not no. good. I've said it before, mm. you know. Mr. Nigel, the most of hey, hold on, if, hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. Sir. Okay. You know, in the name of we must talk, we must talk and insult our guests. It's not a good thing. You know, the person that you insult today will not come back to your panel. That's it. It's not you they feed them. Eh? He will not come back again because you already let him know that you are a liar. You eat people. He will run away. <laughs> you know, if you call hey, him. No, 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 it's not the boy. Who would they chop people here? Yeah, with your carnivorous animals here yeah, will chop you. Mm, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Na, 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 watch. I, I see it this way. You invited somebody into your house. You can't harm the person. Exactly. If the person get crashed, like say, he, like say the person come blindly the way people enter here, and you have and you saw has happened to discover it is you can answer. But this one, you invited him. He is coming. You are hosting him. So assuming he's a normal host, you present him with cola, or do you want cold water? Do you want a cup of tea or coffee? So when you give all these things, that is the hospitality, and then you turn back. To whom he, no, 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 it's not good. No, no, Mr. C. Yeah, the, 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 the truth of the people, matter is that just I believe that what, we are, what to do. Just tell people, set a rule and don't, mm. just set a rule. People can follow that rule instead of. I um, believe the panelists in on Ninja Watch are very, you know, civil. And uh, so far that uh, we have been hosting guests here, we, we know one or two people that tend to, you know, uh, cross the line. But uh, for the most part, Exactly, exactly. You know, you know, we'll and, just and say, it, it is because of those people that Niger Watch is thought of issuing this caveat now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we know. We because know. it's an embarrassment to him, yeah, too. Well, well, you should not use that caveat to, okay, now, for example, on the, okay, so Wednesday now, reach and you say, okay, CM, uh, you are not going to be asking questions. How will you feel on that day? Because, well, because one, 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 one person that is not even constant here, which you, which you know, I know, you now, you now, um yeah, come on well, exactly I mean, to come and muddy the, to come and muddy the water the way they say so anyway <laughs> yeah. it's not good as a person because we invited him 
So it's a host. You don't invite. It's an African hospitality. You invite. You don't invite people. Niger watch. This is like your house. You don't invite people into your house, and they prepare to come and interact with you only for you now to no no no. Because what if the person turned back and didn't come? Will you go somewhere and inform? If you want to insult anybody or whatever, go to the person and they. But not when you bring. If we invite him here as a host, we are taking care of him. We are in his defense, just like somebody come to your house. You don't want the person to be some harm to befall the person. So when the person comes, I'm not making an excuse, but then uh, ask constructive questions that will even be beneficial or even help the person to learn. He said, look at the direction we are hoping, but not, that's what they call insult. Anyway, we all understand what is insult. So it shouldn't happen or to humiliate somebody. No, 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 no. No, it's yeah, not. It, it, well, in, light, in light of that, I mean, um, well said, Dr. CM. What we can probably do is... Uh, I mean, let me know. Make I quickly order for um, better um, Mota Guinness and um, uh, better suya. For, all of that kind of dry suya. We for go, Texas. We, that, now Nigeria, you there on Texas? We, we go full mouth for the deputy governor. Now Nigeria, you there or Texas? Which one? My brother, if, if not to DHL and whichever one we go do them. So we we'll just this one. We'll just put that table, that center sure. table, put and there. Yes, Nigeria talk. politician, not the other pizza from abroad. They do breakfast. I know sure say give us a mandate the original America. Which one be gain more Guinness uh, for US? I've been in Kaja you day self day deceive us. Say. Ask them, there's more Guinness here. Uh, there's more Guinness in New Jersey. Okay, or, original more Guinness or not be all this. Uh, the one, the one from Nigeria. Yeah, original have, one. Yeah, we have um, Fanta. All of those things. They bring. That's yeah. We get, we get the deku, deku Yeah, they day here. Even for me, but that their family no make sense because they, they, they look more whitey than the I don't know. Where, where? What job? Agidi have a suit. Say if you can get it. I, I, no, Agidi one. Me, they make Agidi for my house. So that one no use. My beloved sister, you don't fit type for me before. When you they talk, say too white. <laughs> but but how person how person go go America still they look for all those kind. You know which one be pan wine? If you want drink pan wine, Ghanaians bring it. It doesn't look. I, I used to see the bottle in African store. It doesn't look like it. Like it looks more. No no no. That, that pan wine you see, it comes from it comes from the Caribbean. Now. It comes from the okay, Caribbean. I, I don't know where it comes from. I don't drink all yeah, yeah, it comes from the Caribbean. I see it. That's just. But that you know the shark. That you know be rip and wine. You know they enter. You understand? They go down dilute them. <laughs> yeah, and that's in you know, the data. You understand? So you're the you are better off holding your deck You're not can like a few bottles. All right. Um, my brother, you people... don't take for each other. You say you know the enter. <laughs> All right. Uh, please hold on. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. Like I was saying just now, I'm gonna switch this broadcast when I finish this statement to a new one. Let's talk about AeroFi quickly. Uh, okay. then I'll leave the platform for every one of you. You see, on this platform, I understand say body the paper of us, including myself. But we must learn to listen to yourself when you are talking. If you talk anyhow in the name of make we talk, am I be nobody will be close to you. Why can't let me say this? Why can't anybody that is listening to me right now? Why can't you ask yourself, say, as as me, Elvis, as I they talk rich for my media, eh? As I they talk rich, as I they verse rich, as I they call my my, uh, uh, my government satanic rich, they are still attracted to my platform. Many of them want to come to my platform. I don't know what can you learn from that. It means that they know that I listen to myself when I'm talking, right? They know even me calling them satanic is even lesser than calling them moral. Like the other guy said, I've been not be waiting to call them with that. This uh, uh, scene that they were questioning. What, what you call okay, them? Okay, okay, no, no, no. This scene, they are the first to apologize. You know? Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. No, he was, he was bosom, 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 bosom. Yeah, that's the word he used. Moral. Okay, that's the word he used, right? Yeah, so, that's it. Okay. But they ask him, apologize and move on. You see? Say me, you can't come here now. I will be telling my guests, say, you be killer. You join the people where you go kill people. It, it's not nice. It's not nice. 
I don't feel talking before anybody that is coming to this platform, please, please listen to yourself. In fact, any question you want to pass to my 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 guest, read it. Proof, proof. When I was in university, before you submit your assignment, you know, my professor normally tell us to proofread up to 10 times. 10. Yes. You proofread first. Uh, Augustine, you know, now UK day. You understand our educational... So you language. want us to go use a Grammarly? People can use Grammarly too, right? It doesn't mean... Oh, <laughs> even if you use Grammarly, <laughs> now the even idea, the you go see, say, read. some sentence, you go change, yeah. some paragraph, you go remove uh, or rephrase exactly. that. That's why you go to change. Proof change, proof change, read. change. Even, change. Me. Hmm. even me, I don't write assignments. I've decided after proofreading for more than five times, I've decided already, say... Now, final submission be this. Just because I live on for another two days, the day where I want your submit, if eternity, I want to submit and call, we submit at that time. I don't know about now. We're submitting online through eternity. You yeah, know? eternity, yes, yes. Eternity. Yes. You know, so as I want to say my submit online, my yo, I take another one hour to hour. They submit. Okay, hold on first. <laughs> nah, nah, money. Okay, hold on, thank you. You know, oops, it, oops, it, oops, it, oops, it, oh, God. I'll forget what I talk just now. Mona, hold on first. Thank you. You know, as I want to submit proofreading again, I get to see that error your day with the first paragraph. That one, the first paragraph, I don't pass more than five times or seven times. It go your day, your front there. Most of the things that many of you listening to me right now are looking for in life is in your street. You go buy ticket, go go another country, seven hours journey, 12 hours journey. You go to look for her. And the thing, they just your own street. <laughs> You know, so sometimes we have to because tomorrow the position with these people there, so you go there, there, you are there, there. You know, we, and if we are also talking to these people, we should be generalizing. Say all of them and all of them, or uh, you know, all of them are satanic. All of them are no, not be person for inside the scene today. This man, so when I say say poke up for it, so we raise the hand. So our our Labour Party. Uh, Person, I've been not be this platform and still talking before. See, none of our leader uh, Labour Party uh, 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 representative or uh, 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 senator or whatever is talking. Now, Alex, yeah, Alex talk. Other people still talk. Him. Say, you know, they talk, you know, they talk, you know, they talk. They talk today now. Not so many of now with all present since. Yeah, we are not present. Alex, it, no great talk now with the present. It, it could be me. You know why I'm talking like this? It could be me. Because people feel criticized by it's little wrong. But the day where I go do good, you will come lock your mouth. You know, to talk now, your mouth will come to heavy you. Because if this man way talk so now, we don't see so much praise on now. now. Then, what about if now you tomorrow? Please, when we are treating each other, let's be careful. It's very, very important. The way I will protect you, I will protect my, my guests. I will also protect my callers. I will protect my commenters and protect everybody you know insulting each others directly or indirectly uh passing uh, uh, our submission based on assumption all the time is not really good you know let's make sure that we you know because people will not come my senator don't come to my platform you know senior advocates don't come to my platform you know uh, uh many many now you now know you know, so if I was that bad as some satanic people as soon as be, to say I bad. If you say these people, they come to my platform. Did you know me wanted to come the other day? Now some of you are not He listened. He was listening. The day I presented it, he was listening. The, the submission ways of people give for this for this panel. Not be everything I'll come talk again. When you are talking on the public space, the whole world is listening. They listen to yourself. When you are passing informations, when you are talking, if you are talk, 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 the same people you are talking, they are listening to you tomorrow. I, I say, I say, make an event, I will say, no, 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 <laughs> that platform. I'm gonna go remind me, say, I'm the most useless person on it. Go be as you get now. Eh? Now, can I say something? So, um, yeah, go ahead. You have, you have, been, you are, you are an experienced personality in terms of. Um, journalism your experience you read it and you know the 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 kind of you've known everybody at the way of approach i believe 
and from the voices of everybody you can identify the person's voice there's one thing i should i like you to note here it's not that you don't treat everybody you know everybody i believe you know because journalists are very wide in reasoning you know and you know the kind of sometimes if some people is approaching a question i think in journalism there's a way you cut them off i believe there's a way you cut them off my brother and refresh, one thing you must tell him to repress eh? one thing you must understand is this right now four years at this study film and media i understand what you are saying but one thing i also want you to understand people easily pick offense call you bad person you how you want to handle them as they talk you stop on the way you don't commit wala. no it's your own guest too you have to protect your guests and that is what i was told when uh, uh one of my guests came here he was accused of joining the people that are killing people before you know after the brokers that day the next day he talked to me he said this this, this that was very very unprofessional and it was very very wrong you shouldn't be allowed I, the same person they tell me so you shouldn't be allowed such thing on your platform yes you, know? you should allow it i i, I agree you i i wanted to do that you should allow it no, because there I, are some people that come to talk I anyhow like to carry everybody along and i also expect everybody to use their own you know um maturity their own sense you know get some kind of thing where i want to talk if they heavy me i believe say you are matured you go know by yourself eh? you know so you go be as you get you know it's not how body take the pepper person and all that you get some people will go come here you go you go you, you, before <laughs> they don't they change now you go insult everybody if they talk let me talk and all that blah 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 at the end of the day you know you say you, you, fine you don't deal with me for a long time for my platform and all that but at the end of the day you are not even consistent anymore on my platform what of say the same people we can't say many pursue that time pursue all of them you yourself you are not available you see this is what i call selfishness you are not available you be like person where say me pursue your wife you pursue in congo mariam eh? <laughs> how do you feel is the truth now person say your wife is not good no i'm not gonna take her bitch for a woman no no my wife don't talk to me like this not like you will converse go as go beat your wife bitter 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 for sure come on for us you can't say tomorrow now you see they carry your wife go a uh, restaurant i go <laughs> your life i got watch you don't you don't grow you don't ripe you don't override so <laughs> look at yourself i override planting now everybody desire you so uh -uh. stand stand get it down because god do your side everybody don't want That's chop true right planting now so it's for it's left for you to not make sure don't look at people's face if you don't want me to come on to ask that man question because of my deal well it's okay i, I mean me i respect that because and not everybody would think like you so let every, everybody must people. think like you because you be red tomato to eat everybody must think like that if you don't want to think like that let you go and stay in the moon or with chinese restaurant and stay there and eat you got to you got to respect the owner of the platform and you got to follow the ideal even of the apart, platform even apart from respecting me it's not really about me like that too. it's about our guest uh, you know, do, apart from uh, the guest new person come platform may we take care for waiting with the tear our new person anyway the thing is uh, the thing is uh, part of it first of all number one part of all this is what they call editor editorial meeting or editorial decision or editorial policy and that is left for you and your team then secondly i feel that when somebody comes even if you know the person hold this type of view by the question and the interaction we can convert him that is still good yes we can say look this is your idea this is our idea don't you think our idea is better the person might be converted but for the me, idea, for me, the for idea example, of the idea of belittling somebody, no, it's not. It's not nice. That's no, what I don't I'm really. I don't. Me, I don't if I, I don't, want to criticize somebody, I right, criticize. And I the don't same things on my panel. I can say, for example, you've been part of the House of uh, Representative members for the past eight years, and yes. your presence, so so things happen in so so constituency, even yes. your own constituency, even in so many other area, and you didn't say anything. You know, yes. how do you want us to trust you forever? Exactly. That is not in That, that, is, con that is constructive. That yes. is constructive. That alone, you are finished him. 
Don't be saying you're from your teller or Ali say, uh, hello, sir. Thank you very much for coming to our platform. You are one of the satanic devil, devilish person that. <laughs> Wait, eh? uh, please, let's let's all that, of that, us are learning. Now, on a military junta uh, process, you know, all of us are learning every day, and uh, you know. We should, you know, see uh, Barrister Michael Zekome. He has been to my platform three times now, right? You know, but the other day he was talking from another platform. He said, Mr. Yes in it. Mr. Yes in it. All they do is always grant loan. They don't care about the people that is dying. That's a constructive criticism. Exactly. Yes. It's a constructive criticism. You know, there's a way you we do these things and, you know, we understand ourselves. But meanwhile, Thank you very much, my people. Um, Amaka Afojebi, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate your consistency uh, for your continued support. Your pocket never run dry. Thank you very much, everybody that is listening to me right now. I'm going to turn this broadcast right now to a second uh, um, broadcast. I'm ending this one 100%. So I want us to talk about um, Aerofy and we discuss other discussion here. But another thing about it is that I'm not going to be here you know, by myself uh, for that long to do this together. But meanwhile, I appreciate every one of you right there. Please, I want you to, I'm going on the break right now. Refresh if you want to follow up with the next uh, segment. All you just need to do is refresh and then we take it from there. Now God, now God bless you now, my people. Yeah.